Twice each year, race fans gather by the thousands to witness, under the lights, the largest sporting event in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Tonight, in its golden anniversary year, NASCAR's Winston Cup Series resumes its 1998 title chase at Richmond International Raceway. Less than a week ago, for the 10th time in 1998, Jeff Gordon was in victory lane, and this time another $1 million bonus came with it. 18 top fives in 24 events has the competition asking, when will this train derail? These are the multiple images of a multi-millionaire whose talented team has been but a blur to the competition. Although totally focused, Mark Martin's mission to chase a championship was temporarily derailed in Darlington. For this team, broken parts meant broken hearts as they continue to chase this elusive rainbow. These tinted glasses may shield this sun, but there is no way this determined Dale can hide his heritage. This season, the Jarrett legacy looms large. He returns tonight to a track that toasted his talents a year ago. But both Martin and Jarrett need help from history. A replay of June's rough ride here at Richmond for the Rainbow Warriors could open the door for these two to win the battle and climb back into the war. Historically speaking, some of our nation's most ferocious battles have taken place here in the Richmond area. And tonight's fray may just join that list. Ironically, this race is sponsored by a battery company. And it was one year ago tonight that Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin began their final charge toward a Winston Cup championship. Remember, Jarrett logged three wins in his final nine starts to finish just 14 points shy, with Martin another 15 back. Could it happen again? Well, you know what they say about history. In the fast-paced racing world, this has not been a typical season for Terry Labonte. His consistency and his smile have faded in the last three months. A winner at Wild Wild Richmond in June, he's been cold as ice ever since. One top ten in 11 races. Labonte's run into some walls, but he's certain he hasn't hit one. Intensity, speed, performance, trademarks of a champion ready to win again. Rusty Wallace isn't hiding behind those shades. Instead, he's simply trying to dull the glare of disappointment. Racing well, just not winning. His last victory came here in June of 97. A small island in a turbulent sea and season of blown engines and blown opportunities. It's been smoother sailing this year, but Rusty's voyage lacks any racer's ultimate goal, a win. 53 races, no wins. Even an ice cold Miller couldn't quench Rusty Wallace's thirst for victory lane. But Richmond International Raceway has been a sure cure for his winless hangover in the past. He has six wins here. He was fifth here last year, third last spring. On the pole tonight, the first time this car has ever won the pole. Wallace and his crew have conquered consistency, but they haven't partied in victory lane in one year, 194 days, 18 hours, and 36 minutes. But who's counting? Will it be Miller time tonight? Well, take two and call me in the morning. Mr. Excitement put on quite a show last night in the NASCAR Bush Series race, charging all the way from the back of the pack to finish in the third position. Tonight, he'll also fall to the back of the pack for the start. Jimmy Spencer crashed hard during happy hour. He's okay. The car isn't, so Spencer has gone to a backup car. He says the car he wrecked was capable of winning the race, but he wasn't so confident of his backup car. Still, you can expect Spencer to provide a lot of excitement tonight as he tries to battle his way from the back of the pack to the front. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome to be with us again this year, Mr. Doug Pearson, President, North American Operations of Exide Corporation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the most dramatic words in the world of professional sports, here is Doug Pearson. Gentlemen, start your engine. <laughs> that a three-hour roar begins that will end with one of the 43 cars and drivers in victory lane here tonight on a beautiful evening in richmond virginia
Richmond International Raceway, ESPN Speed World welcomes you to the 25th race of the 1998 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400. Going into this event, Jeff Gordon has a 199-point lead over Mark Martin after Mark's engine problems last week at Darlington. Pulsiter Wallace is fourth in points. Bobby Labonte and Jeremy Mayfield have never even recorded a top five here at Richmond. We have raced four times this year on short tracks, and Gordon has recorded one win. That was at Bristol. But both Martin and Dale Jarrett have accumulated more short track points with Dale Jarrett's consistency putting him atop the list. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins. We're just about set to go racing. And you know, a lot of times before the race, we talk about how within a few laps, there will be a second groove, a higher groove, and we'll see side-by-side -side racing. Well, we've already got that tonight, Ned. Yes, we do. The Sawyers worked very hard when they designed this racetrack to make one where they could race side-by-side. -side. And certainly they were able to do that last night in the Bush race here at the Richmond International Raceway. And I think we'll see a lot of it here tonight. And they not only can pass on the inside, they can pass on the outside as well. And then it really doesn't matter where you start in this race. You can still win it. Oh, yeah. Folks, if your favorite driver is qualified back in the 12th or 15th row, don't worry about it. Because as Ned said, you can pass this racetrack. As a matter of fact, Dale Jarrett here one year ago qualified on the inside of the 12th row and came of here, away from here the winner. Nearly 100,000 people are in attendance. Settle back and enjoy an evening of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Back with the lineup of the green flag in a moment. I've known Paul since he's about this tall. Gord was quite a bit taller. I've known Todd and Paul since my 74 Pinto. Paul and Gord are a couple of real classy guys. Bingo. Coast. At Richmond as we get set to go racing, let's take a look at our Walmart Everstar grid. Rusty Wallace has his fourth pole of 1998. Ken Schrader is alongside in the front row. Take a look at the starting lineup, as in just one more lap, we will be set for racing. Now, we do indeed have many races to go here in the 1998 season, but the point was made during NASCAR today that especially this time of year every single position on the racetrack is important every point counts the first five positions five points difference the next five four points and the remainder of the field just three points separate so if you go out to pick up 10 points from 20th to 30th or from 30th to 20th that's 30 points as we look back through the starting field you can see just how close the times were and that's normally the way it is on a short track just a fraction of a second read really, is separated first and last. Jimmy Spencer will drop to the rear of the field for the start of the race because he crashed during happy hour. And the 13 car of Dennis Setzer will also go to the rear because both of those drivers are going to start this race in backup cars. Ricky Rudd celebrating his birthday today. Mike Skinner was the fastest qualifier second round. In fact, he was the only qualifier in second round to make the field, and Mike Skinner qualified good enough for the 26th starting position. As we get back here toward the end of the field now, we see that Dale Earnhardt and Brett Bodine will start from row number 17, so Earnhardt has a lot of positions to make up. Kenny Irwin Jr. made his debut in Winston Cup competition here a year ago, starting on the outside of the front row this year he starts back in the 18th row and now you're taking a look at the provisional starters for tonight's race and dick trickle was the fastest man in happy hour here this afternoon even though he's starting back at the back of the pack daryl waltrip takes the previous champions provisional and starts back in the 43rd position there are the four drivers who were unable to make the field buckshot jones gary bradbury also this is Kenny Irwin on board camera, Rick Mast on board camera, Kenny Walton on board, Mark Martin will be riding along with him, Bobby Labonte, the food line on board, Sterling Marlin, the Coors Light, and Rusty Wallace, our pole sitter, will be having an on board camera. Here we go, the pace car pulls down into the pit area, and the green flag waves, the race is over.
Jack Rabbit, Rusty Wallace got out to the lead. Has now led 17 of the last 20 races here in Richmond. The battle is for second between Burton and Schrader. And they've run side by side for a lap. Burton in the 99 car just has not been able to get by the 33 of Schrader. They get off the close there. And Sterling Marlin, he don't know which one to follow. And that's exactly what Ned and I were talking about just a couple of minutes ago. You can race at this racetrack side by side as Schrader and Burton are proven. And the 10 car is off the pace. Ricky Rudd dropping to the back of the field now. And that car certainly not up to full song as he goes down the back stretch. Big action in the pack, though. Wally Dolan back. Jerry Cope has top O9 in the 91 car. His first ride in... Oh, he just turns left and goes under. Tries to get under Derek Cope. And this battle for second still rages on as Burton is to the inside and Schrader the outside. And a bird's eye view from Sterling Marlin. And they've been that way for four laps now. John, what's wrong with Ricky Rudd? Bob, as unbelievable as it sounds, he has no brakes. He goes to hit the brake pedal and it will not pump up it goes all the way to the floorboard so we expect him to get on the pit road they're gonna have to have some crewmen down a few pit stalls from here to try and grab onto the car to stop it when Russ finally makes his way on the pit road we've got a great four car battle here as jeff gordon now begins to rattle the cage and make a little bit of noise he moves past sterling marlin and goes into four spot but Marlin is not, yeah, he does give up the position. Meanwhile, up ahead, it is still a great battle for second. To John Andretti, the STP Pontiac, trying to take a look on the inside of Sterling. As Jeff Bird still will just not give it up. Oh, some contact between the two. Bird came off the second corner. He touches the back of the 33 car. Both cars wiggle, but able to continue. Now we look back from Sterling Marlin to John Andretti. Also back there is Bobby Hamilton, Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, and Mark Martin. And Ricky Rudd has made his way off the pit road. So the brake problem that John told us about will hopefully be corrected by the Rudd team as they push the car behind the wall. We're having difficulty even getting it stopped, rolling it behind the wall. Andretti drives on the inside of Sterling Marlin. Oh, contact. We saw the tire smoke bump with the right front tire on Andretti's car. Made contact with sheet metal on Sterling Marlin's. That's Andretti in the 43, Sterling in the 40. Different paint job for Sterling this week. There are a lot of new paint jobs that you'll be seeing throughout the evening. Andretti gets that spot. Meanwhile... Ken Schrader hangs on to second, but still Jeff Burton is right there for the challenge. While all this is happening, you see from the onboard camera how far Rusty Wallace is ahead. It is one and a quarter seconds between the leader, Rusty Wallace, and this battle for second. Yeah, he loves to, he loves to look at his room here and see those guys back there racing side by side, bumper to bumper, because you know he's a full line. Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd behind the wall. The crew going to work under the left rear of the car. Tell them to get the car up on the jack so they get a jack stand underneath and the crewman can go in. That What's happening is the brake line apparently has come loose on the left rear so the hits the brake pedal and squirts the brake foot out of the left rear. So that's why Ricky Rudd hasn't got any brakes. They're going to look underneath it now to see if they need a flashlight now because it's very dark underneath the car. They're looking, trying to figure out if it's just something they can tighten and John Andretti's got something dragging already. That's something, that's something out of someone else's car, it looks like. Is that a grill from another car? <laughs> I think from the Ford car, he and Sterling Marlin had made some contact there a little bit ago. And Marlin has lost a position as Bobby Hamilton has come on to take six. John Andretti is running in fifth as your scoreboard shows you. Well, Derek Cope has dropped back. He's back in the uh, 40th position. He started up in the 8th spot, and it has been a steady backward slide for Derek Cope. 
Apparently that car just not handling at all. Where it's say the plug wire is loose, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's too bad. Because he did have such a great qualifying run, and really had that team had their hopes high for tonight. Well, with Burton in second, this becomes the race for third spot, and Jeff Gordon, it appears, will take it from Ken Schrader. Oh, he might have as much trouble as Jeff Burton. No, he's not going to have too much trouble as he. And here's oh. trouble on the front straightaway. It looks like maybe is that Rick Mass. Rick, Rick Mass. Yes. A big puff of smoke right here at the starting line, and look at the car fill up with smoke. And, and the caution flag is out. And we see the fire underneath the car as some of that oil is getting on the exhaust. And Rick, there's a fire under your feet there, bud. If I was you, I'd be stopping. And look at all the smoke that is in the air. John Kernan. What we're being told from the crew down here in the pits is that Rick Masters broken an oil line and the oil coming pouring out and then getting on the header pipes and that's what started the fire. So a broken oil line for Rick Mass as he comes down pit road, smoke boiling out of that race car. He'll pull it behind the wall too and they'll try and get it repaired. And that may mean a lengthy cleanup here at Richmond as he went all the way around the racetrack. You can see it there. They'll have to bring out the... Uh, oil dry and get it up off of the racing surface before we can go back to green flag competition. The first caution is out. 17 laps have been completed here at Richmond International Raceway and Rusty Wallace is leading over Burton, Gordon, Schrader, and Andretti. Here at Richmond, it came out on lap 17. And Rick Mass goes down and he blows an oil line off the car. The oil blows on the exhaust system and creates a tremendous smoke stream. Right along with Rick Mass, listen to his off, listen to his camera, listen to his engine. All at once, you see that smoke coming up inside where he gets it, gets off of the gas and gets it down out of the racing groove just as quickly as possible. So it's obvious the engine was still running fine, but just blew an oil line off. And we see Rick sitting in the car waiting for the crew to. Find the line that blew off, repair it. So he is the second car that has gone behind the wall here in the first 20 laps. For an update on Derek Cope, here is Bill Weber. Well, Derek Cope has been on pit road twice already and is expected to make a third visit. They were hoping that a plug wire had come off. That would account for him going from eighth, where he qualified, to the rear of the field. They took out the heat shields. They checked the plug wires. They were all attached. They believe the third cylinder on the right side has gone bad. So Derek will come back down pit road. He'll try and do some work underneath the hood, then send him back out in the gum out Pontiac. Here's John Kernan. Rick Mast is... Rick Masker pushing it backwards. He's going to come back out from behind the wall. What they think the problem was, and now Ricky Rudd also will be coming out, so they apparently have his brake line problem finished, but they uh, tightened up a loose oil fitting. They're hoping that that was the only problem with Rick Mascar. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Ponch. And John Andretti just exiting the pit road. They pulled away what was up, either a brake duct or part of a crush panel off the Sterling Marlin car. He came in, took an opportunity to get the debris from the back bumper, put four tires, and uh, fill it up with fuel. Let's check back in the Derek Cope pit with Bill. Cope has come back to pit road. They have raised the hood. They are working underneath it on the third cylinder on the right side. They're going to try and put the hood pins back in. They have not lost a lap yet. Cope refires. 2700 RPM down pit road, and it looks like he'll beat the pace car out and will not lose a lap. Uh, just barely, but he does indeed stay on the lead lap. We'll take a break and be back with more live coverage from Richmond International Raceway. It's a beautiful sight on a gorgeous night in Richmond as ESPN presents this NASCAR Winston Cup race. And throughout the evening, the overhead shots will come to you courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. We are about a half a lap away from the resumption of this race. It was brought out because of Rick Mass loose oil line, which dumped a little bit of oil on the racetrack. But the uh, track crew has gotten it cleaned up, and we're about ready to go back to racing. Derek Cope has made numerous pit stops. He's in once again, but he has remained on the lead lap. And you can see Ricky Rudd is back out on the racetrack. Rudd is 15 laps down. Rick Mast is five laps down, and the winningest driver here at Richmond since the reconfiguration of the track since it was late for the three-quarters of a mile, Rusty Wallace, is still leading. Ooh, 
Jeff Burton, I believe, got into the wall coming off a of turn two. And Jeff Gordon got into the back of him, and Burton had to slow down and get his car back under control. Gordon took the third spot, or the second spot away, rather, from Burton. See Ricky Rudd working hard on Rusty Wallace. Trying to get back in front. Rudd is several laps down, 15 laps down. Yeah, he'd like to get one of those back that Rusty would, uh, wouldn't hurt him to let him go ahead. Ricky has on fresher tires than does Rusty right now. So. And that's exactly what Rusty Wall does. Backs off, lets him go. Remember, Todd Bodine is driving the 91 tonight. He just passed Kyle Petty, and that is for the 10th position. Okay. Bobby Labonte, the food line on board, looks back at Todd Bodine. Oh, there he's going by Mark Martin is Bobby Labonte. how severe that damage is, but he's going to try to get it back to the pits. And Robert Presley also has some major damage. Okay, all three of those cars are torn up severely. See Presley's car pancake. There we see Presley right in the middle of the corner. He goes up, and something happens to the right front, like he blows the right front tire, and along comes Earnhardt and Nemechek with just no place to go. Victim of circumstances. They had their full acceleration coming off of turn number two, and when Presley had his problem up there, they were just on top of him. That's what we saw just a moment ago from our turn three camera. And look at the fire that Earnhardt's car when he knocked that fuel pump off. Wow. This is only a three-quarter mile racetrack, but the two cars that crashed earlier today, Dennis Setzer and Jimmy Spencer, both had to be removed from the racetrack on a rollback indicating the severity of the damage that the cars can suffer here in an accident. And there is the latest victim, one of the latest victims, 
Dale Earnhardt with a lot of smoke rising from that area over near turn number three. You know, we always continue to talk about, we talk about qualifying and how you can qualify in the back and work your way up to the front because you can pass on this racetrack. But we always talk about what a disadvantage qualifying poorly is. There's a classic example because the more cars you're behind, the more chance you are to become involved in an accident. Very good point. Well, there's a Jasper car right on the outs, right in front of Kenny Irwin. And just the right front breaks, the tire goes flat, or something breaks on the right front. The car just veered into the outside retaining wall. Sterling Marlin is in, Jerry. And they have already changed right side tires on Sterling Marlin's car. Tony Glover making the call to bring him in. They clean a lot of debris off the windshield. Allen away, pretty good pit stop of uh, less than 19 seconds for Sterling Marlin under the car. Now we keep talking about these cars able to pass. We'll find out if they can or not because these are some pretty good race cars that are making pit stops and losing that track position. And those that were at the middle or the back of the pack uh, coming in for pit stops, they had nothing really to lose by coming in and getting some fresh tires on. But those running up front remain out there, including Wallace and Burton and Gordon, Schrader and Bobby Hamilton running in the fifth position. We'll have more live coverage of the X. Here at Richmond in 1976, a standing room only crowd saw Dave Marcus beat Richard Petty for his second career Winston Cup victory. The win is one of five for Marcus in a 30-year career, a career that includes over 960 Winston Cup starts. His three decades of dedication to Winston Cup racing have put Dave Marcus among the legends of the sport. NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Dave Marcus' most recent victory was on this track in February of 1982, a race that we televised here on ESPN. He started 22nd tonight, a great qualifying effort yesterday, and he's running 21st right now. Under caution for the second time this evening, we had a major accident over on the back stretch, lap 35. Robert Preston, we see something happen to the right front. Nemechek, Dale Earnhardt comes along with no place to go, and bam, a lot of damage of three good race cars. They brought out the rollback for Robert Presley's car. Heavy damaged on the right side of it. Let's go down to John Kernan, who's with Joe Nemechek. Joe Nemechek, Nemechek's crew has that big hammer, is out trying to beat out the uh, sheet metal damage. Joe, what happened? Uh, I'm not real sure, you know. All of a sudden, Robert Presley's car bounced off the wall and, and just shot right in front of us. Had nowhere to go and, you know, collected me and then Dale got into me and it's just a big wreck. You know, it's, it's kind of real a shame for, uh, I feel sorry for these Bell South, this whole Bell South crew. Uh, we're trying to rebound. You know, we had some pretty tough races here in the last couple of weeks and we had a heck of a car tonight. I mean, we were going to the front. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's just a shame. I mean, this car tore up really bad. Uh, I'm sure we'll get it fixed to get out and ride around, make a few laps, and maybe get a few points. But uh, I tell you what, they, they had a they had a tough race here last night, and I hope it's not going to be the same tonight. But uh, we'll be all right. And the good news is Joe is okay. His teammate Sterling Marlin, Dr. Jerry Punch, has a report on him. The reason for Sterling Marlin's pit stop, take a look at the front of his Chevrolet. Now, when he and John Andretti got together in the early laps, you saw Andretti was actually carrying the front grille section or screen from the nose of Sterling Marlin's Chevy Monte Carlo. And without that front screen in place, they lost a lot of downforce on the front of the car. Without the downforce, the car was just so tight, Sterling couldn't drive it. They opted to come on down pit road, make a chassis adjustment, put four tires in it, and try to compensate for that loss of that front screen and downforce. So Sterling Marlin also with some problems here in the early going of this race. 42 laps currently in the books of the 400 that will be run here tonight. So far, Rusty Wallace has led all the way, and we have currently had two caution periods that have totaled at the moment 14 laps. Back in a moment. 
you look down at the nearly 100,000 people that have gathered here tonight, every seat is sold for the Winston Cup race. Overhead shots from the Pennzoil Copter Cam. And ESPN will present Sunday Night Football at 8.15 tomorrow night from Foxborough Stadium as the Indianapolis Colts and Peyton Manning take on the New England Patriots. Then on Monday night on ABC Sports, it's Monday Night Football at its new time, 8 o'clock Eastern. Don't miss it when San Francisco tackles Washington. ESPN at ABC, the exclusive home of the NFL in prime time. Here's John Kernan. Dale Earnhardt's crew furiously working on his car and what's left of the right front of it. Uh, Dale, you're all right. You said it was just only like going over a speed bump? Yeah, it really wasn't a hard the lick or anything. It just hit the right front and knocked all the A-frame back in and popped the uh, fuel pump, fuel line fitting off. And that's where the big fire was. But it just fit the bottom A-frame real bad up on the car. We can fix that A-frame right quick. That's not really basically all that's wrong with the chassis enough to go back and race it. As Dale Earnhardt, they hope to bend the A-frame back out and uh, brace in the right front and get back out there and at least uh, pile up a few points. But right now, it looks like they've got a lot of work to do. Five-time winner here at Richmond, and didn't his son put on quite a show last night during the Bush Series race? Tell you what, Dale Earnhardt Jr. put on several shows this year in the NASCAR Bush Series, and last night was just a continuation. If you missed the race, uh, 250 laps, Earnhardt led about 225 of them, Earnhardt Jr., and Went on to the victory. He was awesome. You uh, saw it here on ESPN last evening. And in case you were not able to be with us, we'll take you back and show you some highlights. Never seen the car 23 at rest. Brad Nossinger, the silver car, gets out of shape. The guy third place to points, Mike McLaughlin, runs in the back of three, not one, but three cars. On lap 81, huge crash. Hermie Sadler in the back of both of the drum boys. And on lap 104, Mark Martin trying to move through traffic was tapped by Ed Barrier and hard into the outside wall. Hey, Ed, what's the deal? Dale Earnhardt Jr., his sixth win of 1998 in the Bush Series, and congratulations to that young man. And now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a 140-point advantage on Matt Kenseth in the run for the championship in that series with McLaughlin as a result of his crash falling 276 behind and the defending two-time champion Randy LaJoy sixth in the point standings. All right, the field comes down now, and when it crosses the line, it will get the one-to-go signal. We were following Derek Cope a little bit earlier, Bob making pit stop during the earlier caution. He has made pit stop again here, and we understand that they've replaced a spot plug for a couple of new tires on it, and they think that it's all of his problems are okay. Now let's go to the pits and Jerry Punch. And there's a spirit of cooperation here in NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. A moment ago, Ricky Rudd's crew asked the, the crew of Rusty Wallace, how about working with us on the restart, you know? And Rusty said, okay, I, as long as you don't hold me up, I'll probably let you buy it. And if you can't get by and the caution comes out, I'll slow down unless you get your lap back. Hey, we're all gentlemen out here. Well, he is 15 laps down, so one lap isn't going to hurt either way. No, it won't, certainly won't hurt Rusty at, at this point to, uh, to do that. Kevin LePage has got a great run. Well, Kevin LePage qualified, started 38, took a provisional, and has now worked his way up to the 20th position. Green flag waves again. Rusty Wallace will get out ahead of Ricky Rudd, at least for the moment. Wallace has led nearly a fourth of all the fall race laps on the three-quarter mile track. Robert is being checked out in the infield medical center right now. However, they are going to transport him to Memorial Regional Medical Center here locally because Robert is complaining of pain in his right shoulder. Talked to one of the crew members. They said they really haven't had a chance to talk to Robert about what might have happened to the car, but the spotter said it looked as if they might have blown a right front tire. Robert is going to be loaded onto an ambulance now, and he'll be taking, taken to a local hospital once again. He's all right, walked into the infield care center under his own power. However, he's going into the ambulance.
now, and they will take there to check out that right shoulder where it is very, very sore. They don't know if it's just a deep bruise or anything else. They want to be positive, so they're going to take it to the hospital for x-rays. Battle for sixth position here as Bobby Labonte has it and Dale Jarrett wants it. Yeah, Bobby just took it away from Dale Jarrett this was the last lap. They were racing pretty hard before the caution came out. Now Bobby has the position. And Todd Bodine, once again, a great run in that 91 car. He closed in on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. Mark yeah. Martin is behind him. Todd has been able to get around Mark Martin. He was behind him on the restart, but now he's up there that passed Mark Martin. And has gained 10 positions. Here's a big cluster of cars. That's Jimmy Spencer, who started again the race from the backup car after having crashed during happy hour. We're looking ahead to... Dave Marcus there on the right, and we're on board with Kenny Irwin. And we see Mark Martin, and check it out, Ted Musgrave in the Caterpillar Chevrolet goes by Mark Martin and puts him up to the ninth spot. Todd Madine moving around Dale Jarrett. And takes second over the seventh spot. Out of Ernie Urban is eight. Oh, boys. Ooh. Easy now, boys. They are racing hard here at 57 laps. And here's Kevin LePage. We talked about just a moment ago. He's on the inside of Ernie Urban. That's a battle for the 18th spot. All the way from 38. Well, there he goes by the 50 cars well and done and ready. No, oh, he stuck a nose in there and. Uh, and here's another pack that's all bunched up behind them. Great racing going on back from about 11th through 25th or something like that. John Andretti with those pressure tires. There's Mike Skinner and Sterling Marlin also made a pit stop a moment ago. We saw that. He's trying, trying to work his way back. Radio we're listening to. As Kenny tries to drive under Donovan back, could not quite get that run. Here's Dick Trickle. He's right in the thick of that battle. Dick Trickle, this is Tommy Ball and his crew chief. This is his last race with Trickle. Still there. Hardy's Clear. field summary this time shows you the points change, if there are any. Right now, everybody's staying in the position. And he began the race in. Now that's a regular mess right there. <laughs> yes, it is. Could happen at any moment. And Jeremy Mayfield, the 12 car, working his way in the middle of this mess, and I don't know what else to call it. It's been a kind of excited mess, so isn't it, Bob? Yeah, it's uh, it, good, good racing. Steve Park on the outside of uh, uh, Jimmy Spencer. See Jeff Green in there, he's also a car that made a pit stop. So, of course, did Derry Cope made several pit stops, and Jeremy Mayfield, who certainly did not have a good qualifying effort, had to start in the back of the pack, and he's moved up to 30th. Well, we talked at the top of the show about that side-by-side -side racing, how low you can do it as Bobby Hamilton makes the pass on Ken Schrader, takes over fourth. And Kenny Irwin. Go there. Battling with Mike Skinner. 
have to compliment Mike Skinner on his second round qualifying effort. It was the 26th fastest, and it came in the heat of the day, unlike uh, the first round. Yeah, that was a very impressive run. I didn't think anyone would be able to break into the field with the second round qualifying here today, but Mike Skinner did it. Last year made his debut in this race, started second, and finished in eighth spot. Eleven times this year he has been the highest finishing rookie as he goes for Winston Cup Rookie of the Year honors. Starting 36th place, running 21st here now. Roll in the corner, take your break. Good advice. <laughs> Marlin and Curry Urban. Marlin, remember, made a pit stop. We talked about saving the brakes. You see at the left front. Both those cars, when they, when they drove off in the corner, both the rotors on the left front, we can see cherry red. Just like the right front we saw earlier with Scarf, the rotor cherry red. That's what they're talking about. You've got to save the brakes. They continue to battle side by side. A little paint trading there off of corner four. Now that paint don't match. <laughs> no, that's right, sure. that we've seen Ernie Irvin and Kenny Irwin yeah. racing together. Sure is. It's almost a tongue twister to try to say the two names together. 315. Uh, track is 23.15 seconds. And you know, as running side by side, they still have caught John Andretti in this group in front of them. John run down the inside. He can't go anywhere there. I see why they caught him because right now we've got a couple of cars cheering. They do in the car on the outside. A different paint job in the Cartoon Network car and Chad Little side by side. Bobby Hamilton. He's in fourth, looking for third. Jeff Gordon has that spot right now, and Bobby Hamilton is very fast at the moment. Bobby Hamilton in the four car winner at Martinsville back in the spring. He was the fastest traveler that last lap at 118.489, just a tick of the watch faster than. The guy running right ahead of him, Jeff Gordon. That's where third and fourth are compared to Rusty Wallace, who has an absolutely incredible record in the last 10 races here at Richmond. In all of these categories, Rusty Wallace leads all other drivers, wins, top tens, races led, laps led, and average finish. He has led all 72 laps so far here at Richmond International Raceway in the XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400. Right now it's Burton, Gordon, Hamilton, and Schrader, the top five. For the XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400, Dale Earnhardt, a five-time winner here at this racetrack. He won this event in 87 and 90, in trouble early tonight. Yep. Robert Presley came off the corner, lost the right front tire, collected Earnhardt and Joe Nemechek. But Nemechek and Earnhardt are okay. Presley was complaining of his shoulder pain. Here's their leader, Rusty Wallace, as he looks back at a closing Jeff Burton. He's closed it down to three quarters of a second. And then running in third position is Bobby Hamilton, who was able to take third away from Jeff Gordon. They run about two and a half seconds behind this duo. Actually, during the commercial break, Gordon passed Bobby Hamilton back, and Hamilton passed him back. So, folks, are you missing? That's what happened. Indeed, that uh, lead is shrinking for Rusty. Yeah, it was 6,400 set last time, so we cut it down to a tenth of a second there in the last lap. I'll check the interval for you as we come down to complete lap number 82. Now we see close just a little bit closer, 0.56, just over a half second behind. And we'll see that Bobby Hamilton had the fastest lap that time. Jeff Gordon, the second fastest, and Jeff Burton was the third fastest time. And we'll do it again to see 
if the interval changed and who was fastest again. Well, that time it was stayed about the same. He lost a little bit of ground, lost three hundreds, and once again, Hamilton, the fastest car. Hamilton is pulling away from Jeff uh, Gordon. Another new paint scheme on Johnny Benson's number 26, advertising the Betty Crocker line of foods. They didn't come with black on the side. He was able to get that earlier on in the race. <laughs> That's right. Looks like a streak of chocolate down the side of the car. And Jimmy Spencer is also coming up through the field. He's in 24th position. As he tries to go by Benson, take over 23rd. Boy, he just absolutely destroyed his car in happy hour. I mean, it it was a mess. And just about two minutes before happy hour was going to be over. It's, it was too bad. Happened over in turn number two, but Jimmy climbed out of the car okay, and they rolled the back out car up, out. Bill Weber has an update on Derek Coke. Well, this team had a great qualifying run, and they certainly did a great job on Coke's engine early in this race. They thought maybe a plug wire had come off. They checked that that wasn't a problem. They ended up changing a spark plug, as Ned told you a few laps ago. They used several laps to do it. They never lost a lap. Then they brought him back in under the same caution, changed right side tires and put fuel on, and sent him back out. So it was a disappointing start for them, but they certainly have battled back here. Mark Martin just took the sixth position away from Bobby Labonte. Mark's car seems to be maybe not slowing down as much as others. He was struggling there for a little while, but now he has picked up. He passed Dale Jarrett, Todd Verdine, and also now just passed Bobby Labonte. Mark Martin has had to change his line here tonight to get this car around the racetrack. You would think that Mark would want to be on the bottom of the racetrack. I know he would be, but you see how high he's going around the corner? He's just adjusted because that's where his car right now wants to be to get around the racetrack. And ever see how far it is up to the leader, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. It's about six and a half seconds. And the interval down to just a third of a second, that last lap before they encounter the traffic, the traffic in the form of uh, Dave Marcus. And look at Todd Bodine. Boy, he is a man on a mission. Up to seventh position. Given that car a good ride. They have a potential sponsor that was uh, here, we understand, this weekend for that car. That'd be great to see a sponsor go on it. So they wanted to make a good run here, and are doing so. He's gained 11 positions since the start of the race. Right, Bobby's uh, Interstate Batteries Pontiac, Bobby Labonte's uh, car has gone away a little bit here and now. Look at this. Jeff Burton has caught Rusty Wallace, but can he make the move? Well, we have an indication now of which cars are better on long runs. It looks like Jeff Burton and Bobby Hamilton might be a little bit better because we've run more than 90 laps. You see the brake rotor on Jeff Burton's car? Turn, turn that cherry red when he goes down to the corner. And we see Bobby Hamilton back there. He's been able to get by Jeff Gordon. He's closing in on this lead to him. There's only about three quarters of a second behind Rusty. Well, we've got cameras in both these front cars looking at each other. Rush is sliding up the hill like Mark Martin. Jeff Burton's going to try it on the outside. Wow. I think Rusty looked like he might be just going to give him that outside. Said, hey, if you can pass me out there, you go ahead. I'm going to stick down here on this inside. <laughs> That's probably slow their speeds down when they're running side by side. And look at the fastest. Mark Martin was the quickest that last lap. Bobby Hamilton second and Gordon third. So Bobby Hamilton continues to be one of the fastest cars on the track. And Jeff Burton is now the leader of the race. The Exide Batteries Ford is leading the Exide Batteries 400. They love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Rusty led 93 laps, the first 93, and now Jeff has taken over. Jeff Burton has taken over the top spot. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon runs back in the fourth position. Looks like all the cars have drifted up the hill, now moving up the racetrack just a little bit. Trying to get the racetrack to adjust their cars. Burton moving through traffic now, putting a lap on the number 11 car of Brett Bodine, who is running in 36th position. And the next one they will come up to lap would be Jeremy Mayfield. Good 
competition all night long since the drop of the green flag almost a fourth of the way through this event already here in Richmond. And Jeff Burton and Rusty Wallace work the traffic along with Bobby Hamilton. Rejoin us for more of the XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400 in a moment. Is there anything Power engineered for the corners and made to bring you to your feet. This is the White Track Grand Prix. Selected the official pace car for NASCAR's 50th anniversary season. Wider is better. We have got some great racing going on here at Richmond. As you can see, Rusty Wallace has taken the lead. He has lapped his teammate Jeremy Mayfield. The 99 of Jeff Burton now second, but Bobby Hamilton and Jeff Gordon are right there along with Ken Schrader. And now Hamilton will go to second. And Jeff Burton has still not been able to get around the 12 car. Now he might do it on the inside. You see Hamilton's car wiggle when Jeff Burton came down. I don't think he touched it. I just think when he moves down, he took the air off the spoiler, and it got the four car loose. Even at a three-quarter mile like Richmond International Raceway, you can't get that car in front of you loose. There is Kenny Schrader, who started on the outside of the front row, now running fifth. He had dropped back a little bit, Bob, but he's coming back. That gold Chevrolet is, is on the move now. It seems to work pretty good on old tires. Maybe doesn't slow down as much as some of the others. Now, he doesn't know whether to follow Mayfield or Gordon. I believe you better follow Gordon, though. Whoa! Whoa. He, I think I'll follow Gordon. Whoa! <laughs> he might have hurt me, but he's about to get too quick. Exactly. He turned that steering wheel in the back end, didn't want to go. Boy, Rick Mast is running well after he uh, cut the oil line, had to go into the pits for several laps for repairs, five laps as a matter of fact, but he's running very well since he came back onto the racetrack. He is, however, down in 39th position. The 13 car uh, was wrecked, as we told you earlier, in practice with Dennis Setzer. He has been lapped, so 33 cars remain on the lead lap. And right now, there's probably about a six or seven second gap to the next car that would go a lap down. Steve Park is running 33rd now in the Pennzoil Chevrolet. Now, pit stop's coming up before too long here. And we've completed 106 laps in this baby. And Here's the battle for 12th position, and Kenny Irwin Jr. is doing a great job. He started back in 36th position and is battling for the 12th spot right now with Chad Little. Circuit City onboard cameras. We see Kenny Irwin ease on by Chad Little. Say what, Kenny Irwin has the last three or four races has been doing a terrific job in his 28 car. His best finish this year came in Atlanta early on. You see the white car, Steve Grissom. Here's a battle for the lead. Yes. I thought this was second place, but there's the guy I thought was leading. Jeff Burton, he's back in third. Hamilton is his first. And we have our third leader of the evening, if he can be in the lead when they come back to the line. Here's a Hardy's field summary with the manufacturer's battle once again. And Hamilton comes off corner number four and leads the 110th lap. And so we have had three leaders so far tonight. Wallace, Burton, and Hamilton. Jeff Burton led six laps. I tell you, what, all these guys are using that high line around this racetrack. They found that their cars get around the racetrack a little bit better. Now Schrader's been able to get by Jeff Gordon, put Schrader up to fourth, Jeff Gordon back to fifth. And now the battle is for second place, Benny, as Parson, or rather, uh, Burton and Wallace are wheel to wheel. That's the way Benny drove when he picked yeah. up with Parson. He didn't throw a pair to pull him off on the outside. And Jeff Burton goes to second. As Ned indicated, before too long, the pit stops will be occurring. And before we go to break, we'll show you this battle between the 16 of Kevin Page and the 96 of Ted Musgrave. And that is for the 15th spot. 
Musgrave has fallen back a little bit. He was up there in the top 10 not too long ago, but evidently the handle's gone away on his Caterpillar Chevrolet. LePage from 38 to 15. See Bill Elliott right behind them in 17th position. And LePage takes a spot away. Some of the guys who started in the back of the field are having very good runs here this evening, including Kevin LePage. More in a moment from Richmond International Raceway when we return. Great pit stop. Dale Jarrett rolls down pit road for his first scheduled stop. Here's Jerry again. Dale Jarrett is complaining that his car was too tight. He could not even get near the bottom of the racetrack where the other leaders have been running. They plan a tractor adjustment. They put the handle in the right rear. They're also going to make an air pressure change. Change four tires, and now one round, two rounds, three rounds on the track bar to try to loosen the car up. Four tires on the car number 88. That's five tires going up. Meanwhile, Bobby Hamilton and Jeff Gordon come in as DJ leaves. Hamilton will get right side tires. They plan no adjustment whatsoever on the car number four. Likewise, Jeff Gordon now getting left side tires on the car number 24. One round out of the bar. Gordon's car. Left side tires on. Hamilton down and away. Gordon down and away. Let's go to Bill Weber in the Kenny Crater pit. And a good run for Ken Schrader. He pulls into his pit stall, gets right side tires, no chassis adjustment. He'll swing around to the left side, slap in the second can of fuel. Lugs come off, tires go on. Schrader's been smooth and consistent on his time, looking for the right move. He has a good stop. The Jerry Punch and Mark Martin spin. Mark Martin coming in for his routine pit stop. You would expect to anticipate four tire change. The crew now going to the right side. One puff on the jack. The right side of the valve and Ford is up. Right tires going on. Bobby Labonte pulling away right in front of Mark Martin. Now left side tires going in. Mark Martin frustration for a week ago. Hoping to make up for it here at Richmond. Needing all the points he can get. Left side tires. No major adjustment. Slide air pressure only. He is down and away. Now the car number 43 headed down pit road. John Andretti in the STC Pontiac. His first stop coming here on lap 123. Being very deliberate, 40 miles an hour. He brings the car in, stops this short right by the side. One pump, another half pump on a jack. Likewise for John Andretti, they make the track bar just to try to loosen the car up a little bit. Andretti, as of many of the drivers, have complained that the car was a little bit tight in the middle of the corner. Now, left side tires going on. Getting it full of fuel. Andretti's crew doing the left side tires. And also, great pit work thus far in the 91 car for Todd Bodine. What an effort he has had here thus far in the early running. Left side tires going on Joe Fox Chevrolet. Trying to impress a sponsor here watching tonight. Let's check in with John Turner. Kenny Irwin Jr.'s car is running just great as the tire gets away, but the crew grabs it. Tire change, no adjustment for Kenny Irwin Jr., whose car on this long run was actually running faster than the leaders. And Kenny Irwin was one of five drivers who have led a lap here since these pit stops began. Todd Bodine led two. Benson, Johnny Benson is leading two laps. He's still on the uh, track. Schrader, Martin, and Irwin each led one lap. And Jenny, Johnny Benson's one of those drivers who made a pit stop during one of the cautions back there. So he might go another 20 or so laps. So he's got a lot of cars down. Rusty Wallace just got back in the lead lap. But... Uh, there's a lot of cars that are uh, lapped down right now while these cars have not made pit stops. The Pennzoil Copter Cam will show Johnny Benson in the 26 car is the leader of the race at the moment. There are five drivers who have not yet made pit stops. They are Benson, Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, Ward Burton, and Michael Waltrip. And the reason they have not is because they pitted earlier. Yes, they stopped on lap 36. I know Benson has had a note that Johnny Benson stopped on lap 36. As we see Todd Bodine, the 91 car, racing with Kenny Irwin, the 28th, the Texaco car. That is a battle for the 15th position. 16th spot, sorry. Some of these drivers will be shown on your scoreboard as a lap down, but remember when everything cycles through and as far as the pit stops are concerned, that will go away. Now, if the caution flag were to come out right now, yeah. they, in fact, would be a lap down, and that's exactly what they don't want to happen. That's one reason that you see cars stay on the racetrack for an extended period of time is just 
trying to stay in the lead lap. Now the leader is in. Johnny Benson is in the pits. John Kernan. It'll be a routine four-tire change for Johnny Benson. Plus, they will do a chassis adjustment in the right rear. Take one half of the round out to get tight. The car up is just a little bit loose, apparently. Now they're already swinging around to the left side. You can actually see sparks flying off the lug nuts. Oh, they've got them full of gas. Now they get the left front lug nuts a little bit slow on there. But down and away, they still the lot of gas. Making his way slowly down pit road, staying under the speed limit before he can stand on the accelerator and rejoin the race. And the lead now goes to Jeff Bodine. Yes. This just shows you uh, how better you are on fresher tires. As Jeff Bodine is on all tires, the leader of the race running only 115 miles an hour, and Jeff Burton back in fifth spot who has made a recent pit stop is over 118 and a half and that's three quarters of a second you see 23 4 4 7 22 7 5 three quarters of a second and at 10 laps that's seven and a half seconds Jerry Fudge what happened to Rusty Wallace's tires well he came in seven laps early but he can say he thought I had a tire going down well, this is the right front tire off Rusty Wallace's car and I've marked it right here he indeed had a slice on the inside shoulder so Rusty was going into turn three said tire 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 we were in commercial he wasn't planning on pitting for seven more laps but he came down pit road and made the correct call and again he is running in the seventh position here we have Irwin once again along with Bill Elliott Jimmy Spencer and Sterling Marlin and Chad Little down to Bill Weber as the 22 car makes the stop. They wanted Ward Burton on lap 140, and they got him. Car owner Bill Davis is calling the shots tonight. This team will have a new crew chief on Tuesday when Tommy Baldwin makes the move over from the 90 car. It's been a good run for Ward. This team desperately needs to finish. He's got right side tires, fuel going in, left side tires going on. Burton sitting patiently in the car, waiting for the jack to drop. They have trouble with luck. Now Jeff heads out to John Kernan. Jeff Bodine, who'd also been in earlier, comes in to make his schedule pit stop. Four tires having to do chassis adjustments as of yet. However, I didn't see an air pressure. He was checking the air pressure before he pitted. Coming around to the left side. Left side tires coming off. Getting a little bit of trouble with that left rear tire. But to get him on, tight and the way. And you see Michael Walker also in the pits and the Wood Brothers sit go forward. He's one of those drivers that had made one earlier pit stop. He was in second place when he came in as Bodine. Oh, oh we got a crash up in turn four. Turn four. Point up in front of you, in front of you. Watch it, watch it. Is that there Dick you go. Go Yes, it You're is. Good. You're good. Okay. Oh, that's the leader. That's the leader of the race coming, and there's a car sitting in front of them. They're trying to get laps back, and he's sitting in the middle of the racetrack. Jimmy Spencer is the leader of the race as the race back to the caution occurs. Dick Trickle has hit the wall hard in turn number four. He has, however, looks like gotten the car refired. Tell you what, you just, yeah, we see he gets the car going again. I tell you, you know, these guys have just got to stay on their feet, on their just thinking all the time because they had to realize Jimmy Spencer was the leader. And they had to race him back to the line. We see uh, Trickle is there at the head of Pit Road. His car will not move. So obviously, Pit Road will be closed for some time while they move that 90 car out of the way. Dick Trickle finished fifth here in the early race of 1990, but an encounter with the wall here in 1998 has severely damaged that Heilig Myers car. Now, here is the race back to the caution. Look at Kenny's. Wallace in the 81 car, he shot down on the inside and is going to put himself back on the lead lap. And Chad Little coming up there in the green car. Uh, too close to call. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Watch the upper right of your screen and you can see Dick Trickle into the wall. John Kernan has more. Dick has radioed into the crew and told them that the rear brakes locked up on him. So that's what caused him to spin around and smack the wall really hard. The rear brakes locked up. And so the caution is out once again on the 145 lap mark. This is our third caution of the evening. More from Richmond in just a moment. Stay with us. Our craft 
Heisman Truck Series took to the three-quarter mile oval, and Jack Sprague drove to his fourth win of 1998. And now they have qualified for tomorrow's race, and our old buddy from Winter Heat, Greg Biffle, will lead him to the green. Mike Bliss will start second, Ron Hornaday third, Tony Roper fourth, and Butch Miller fifth in the qualifying for tomorrow's Memphis 200, which you can see at 1 o'clock, but before that, RPM today is at 12.30. And then after the truck race, it's the Kart FedEx Championship Series at Laguna Seca, the Honda Grand Prix of Monterey featuring the Texaco 300. That's at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon here on ESPN. Well, it looks like they've gotten the Dick Triple car out of the way, so I would guess that Pit Road will probably open this time. And this caution flag was ill-timed for several cars. It really was. It was good time for Jimmy Spencer. He was going to have to make a pit stop before too long. Now he gets to make it under caution. But as a result of him staying out there, he's caught a lot of cars a lap down that had made green flag, flag pit stop. Chad Little did not get his lap back. And Steve Grissom, here comes uh, Spencer down pit road now. It looks like he might be the only one of the leaders that's coming in. Of course, the, the other leaders had pitted under green. No, Bobby Hamilton is coming in. Bobby Hamilton, that the third place car is coming down pit road. The leader and the third place cars on pit road, and Jimmy Spencer has driven from last starting position to the lead. Here's Jerry Punch in the 23 pit. And they plan an air pressure adjustment and also an adjustment on the track bar. See the handle in the right rear window. One round, two rounds, three rounds, four rounds. The guys going to get tendonitis with that track bar handle over there. Now, they fall down the jack pad, get them to the left side of the car, get the tires on the left side. Likewise, the car number four, Bobby Hamilton, getting his service. Now working on that car on the left side. Here is Spencer down and away as Bobby Hamilton's Kodak Film Pro not cleaning the front of that car, getting it nice and clean and clear. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Kenny Wallace is on pit road. He's already got right side tires. They made a track bar adjustment. Left side's going on. Car's down. Square D on its way. And Bill Elliott also made a pit stop. And Dale Earnhardt has gone back into competition. As we ride along with Kenny Wallace as he pulls out of the pits. The 43 car of John Andretti. These cars are lapped down now are coming in for service. Yeah, John Andretti and Kyle Petty and Steve Grissom all and... Uh, Mike Skinner all got caught on that situation of the green flag pit stop and Spencer not having made a pit stop has really put them a lap down. So now they're coming in. There you see the cars pulling in. Derry Cope is in, Bill. And the battle continues for this Pontiac team. Right side tires have gone on. They made a track bar adjustment. They're going to go ahead and do left side tires as well. Kyle Penny was pitted behind them. He's left pit road. Terry Labonte heads down pit road, as does Ted Musgrave, holding on the left side tires. Uh, Derek car, uh, Derek's car, they're having trouble with the left rear. Long time to get those lugs on, but now he's on his way. Cope rolling back into competition, as is Setzer, Ricky Rudd, and several others. Well, sometimes the ballet on pit road doesn't turn out to be such a pretty sight. But the athlete that he is, he jumps right up and goes to the other side of the car to get that car up on jacks. We'll be right back. Is third in the outside line. Several cars with the tail end of the lead lap as we go back to green. Chad Little is one of those. Green flag, Takes green, the green flag. flag. And Ernie Irvin is right in front of Jeff Burton as they start. And they're almost a lap down. But when Jimmy Spencer came into the pits, that left them on the tail end of the lead lap. So they were in front of Jeff Burton. Steve Grissom trying his best to stay in the lead lap. Drive as hard as they can and hope that they get a caution flag before Jeff Burton gets up there and tries to pass them. Well, here they come, three deep coming out of the corner as a lot of cars are jockeying around trying to, to do just that. And, of course, that's a recipe for a, a caution flag when you get this many cars running this close together. On board with Kenny Irwin as he sees a lot of traffic up ahead of him. Kenny is running in the eighth position. He's no stranger to Richmond. He's competed here in midgets and silver crown cars. And remember, he won the pole position for the truck race here at Richmond a few years ago. And we see Bobby Labonte, the food line on board cameras. He sees this. And Ned, is, Ned Jarrett is exactly right. This is a recipe for disaster. Caution flags, three caution flags. And so far, these guys are able to run side by side at 125 miles per hour and keep everything under control. Ten 
different leaders so far in the first 156 laps of this race. Rusty Wallace has led the most, 103. Here's Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace battling for position for second spot, and Kenny Schrader continues to be among the contenders. He's fourth. Rusty Wallace, all of a sudden, Jeff Gordon's able to get by and put a couple of car lengths on, so it looks like Rusty's going right now, not handling as well as it was to begin with. As Schrader comes up and challenges the Miller Lite Ford, and Jeff Bodine that Phillips Ford on the inside of Schrader. Yeah, he is now a lap down because of the pit stop situation back in 19th, but he was one of those who led during the pit stop sequence. In fact, he led six laps. So Rusty Wallace gets in front of Schrader, pulls down to go to the inside. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, we can see oh. a little bit of a bump from Schrader. Pulled up the side of Rusty Wallace. Johnny Benson there in the 26 car was also a leader, but he's a lap down now in 20th. This is John Andretti. Boy, there's just nowhere to go. Schrader there, and a lot of others. Rusty's car is just not right right now. I don't know exactly pushing loose, whatever, but he's having some trouble trying to get that Miller Lite Ford around the racetrack. Right now, the 99 car of Jeff Burton, the leader of the race, is the fastest car on the racetrack. He has nobody to deal with except some lap traffic. And Jerry has more on Rusty Wallace. At the beginning of the race when Rusty was leading, and right up until he led, uh, he lost the lead, his car had been a little bit tight. And now for the first time tonight, Rusty has come by and told the crew the car is a tick loose. Not bad, but enough where he can't turn the car abruptly down off the corner. The middle 10 races of the 1998 season were not good for Rusty Wallace. Well, now here we are, three abreast. Rusty says, I don't like that. He backs up wisely, I might add, backs out of the throttle and lets Skinner in the 31, the lowest car, and Schrader go by. Yeah, he said, let this mess straighten out a little bit here, then I'll show you what I got a little bit later. Schrader goes to third, and Rusty is back to fourth, as once again, Jimmy Spencer continues to show some muscle. He's riding alongside Kenny Irwin Jr., and that is a battle for position for the eighth spot, make the ninth spot. And Bobby Hamilton is within the uh, thick of things, too, there. Hamilton, another car that both the Spencer and Hamilton car made pit stops this last dog like Kenny Irwin did not. So those pressure tires, even though it might be just 15 or so laps, 20, makes a big difference. On board with Sterling Marlin, and we'll enter the Tabasco hot zone. You see up to 127 miles per hour. Now he comes off the corner, accelerates down the front straight away. This ought to be a little bit faster. It's the longest. Yes, 135 miles per hour he will reach going into turn one. And now you know why the brake pedal has turned cherry red. You can see how long he kept that foot on the brake pedal. Back and up front. And we see that Jeff Burton, the 99 car, is the leader, but Jeff Gordon is right there as they're trying to get by the lap car, the Skittles Pontiac of Ernie Irvin. Look at the incredible average that Jeff Gordon has in the last six races. 1.6. <laughs> oh, almost as good as you can get. Well, it's tough to gain points on somebody that has a record like that, isn't it? Although Jared and Martin have both have good averages themselves. Jared has averaged 5.8 and Mark Martin 8.5. But boy, it's tough to 
and make ground on Jeff Gordon. And here comes Spencer. He's on the inside of Dale Jarrett. That will be for the eighth spot. I think Jimmy is glad that that front car crashed in the happy hour because this one is running fine. Thank you. Doing great. Jarrett's gun cut on that outside. Cannot get back down. Don't know if his car would stay down if he could get down, but he's just having a tough time out there. Again, the driver box there shows us Spencer. His originally assigned position was 16th, but he started at the back of the field because he went to a backup car. Is up tonight. Hamilton, another car that's got nowhere to go. Mark Martin and Bobby Labonte are battling for the sixth position. Just behind Kevin LePage, who's running fifth. You see Kyle Petty. He's another car that got caught up in the pit stop. He's now a lap down the Hot Wheels Pontiac. Right now, there's 17 cars being shown on the lead lap. You know, this is a great racetrack for competition, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is a terrific. These guys can run side by side and doesn't seem to hurt them that bad inside or outside. It's the pride and joy of the Sawyer family here in Richmond. Actually, we're not located within the city limits of Richmond. We're in Enrico County in the Commonwealth of Virginia. There is Trick, uh, rather, uh, Spencer, Bobby Hamilton, Dale Jarrett, Kenny Irwin, and Sterling Marlin all battling for position. Jerry has an update on Jimmy Spencer. Guys, check the irony in this. The car Jimmy Spencer wrecked today at Happy Hour was the exact car and engine he wrecked on Saturday at New Hampshire. This car he is driving tonight is the exact same car they pulled out of the backup car in New Hampshire, went to the rear of the field, and ran all the way to the top ten before fading at the very end, but still got a very respectable 13th place finish. What did Yogi Bear call that? Deja vu all over again? <laughs> I think you're right. He may want to make this his primary car because it is on a fine run here this evening. We're 25 laps away from the halfway mark. And John has more on Bill Elliott, who seems to be off the pace, John. That's exactly right, Bob. The problem, a miss under the hood. The engine has developed a miss, possibly an ignition problem for Bill Elliott. We can see that 1998 has not been kind to Bill Elliott, and as we see Ernie Irvin still in front of Jeff Burton. And John Andretti has about caught these guys looking around the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, he is catching them. But, you know, there was one other guy that was in this picture when that green flag dropped was Chad Little. He has literally driven away from him. He's pulled away by five or six seconds ahead of the leader, so he's in no danger of going to the lap down. Little is running in 16th in the car just ahead of Jeff Burton. Ernie Irvin is in 17th position, and Jeff has been unable to put a lap on Ernie since the drop of the green flag for the restart. Nearly 100,000 people are enjoying tonight's race here at Richmond International Raceway, and they're seeing a good one. Jeff Burton leads Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Kenny Schrader, and Kevin LePage. Like batteries 400, the Pennzoil Copter Can is bringing you this shot. You know, this is really this thing has got awfully confusing, Ned. <laughs> I'm not confused. I mean, I I am confused about the speed of these cars. I mean, Jeff Burton never received the lead of the race. The 99 car, the Exide batteries four. Uh, Ernie Irvin, he's been trying to lap Ernie Irvin here for the last. I don't know how long. We see John Andretti. He's just driven up and passed all of them going by. And, Ch and there we see Jeff uh, Bodine goes by. And here's Jeff Gordon going for the lead. But, I mean, in the meantime, as you said, Nick, Chad Little must have pulled a quarter of a lap out of these oh, guys. Oh, yeah. He just absolutely has driven away. He's catching the back of the field now. Well, you can fire up your laptops and let NASCAR Online take you trackside with timing and scoring. You can... Jump on www.nascar.com and get Bud Pole qualifying results and the scoring as it happens in Winston Cup, Bush, and Craftsman Truck Series events. So you can do that tomorrow when you're watching the, the uh, truck race here on ESPN. That's NASCAR 
online. Kenny Schrader and Bobby Labonte battle for the fifth position here in Richmond. Labonte had faked him a little bit before he made that pit stop, but now Jimmy Maycar and the crew seems to have put some speed back in that Pontiac. Trying to come back towards the front. Bill has more on Ken Schrader. Good run for Kenny continues. He was a little bit tight before he pitted his fast lap 120. So when he made that pit stop, they increased the air pressure just a little bit. Well, now his car is a little bit loose. So next time he pits, they're going to be returned to the original air pressure. Good run for Schrader. They hope it can continue. Long time since he's been to victory lane. His best ever finish here was a fourth. That happened on two different occasions. Most recently here in June. You know, Bob, a little bit ago, I said there were 17 cars on the lead lap. Now there are 20, as Mike Skinner has gotten back on the lead lap, and we saw Jeff Bodine get his back and John and Grady, so if those drivers can get a caution, they'd be in great shape. And there are only two cars out of the race, Dick Trickle and Robert Presley. Everybody else is still running, including the cars involved in that incident on the backstretch, Dale Earnhardt and Joe Nemechek. As Spencer goes by, Mark Martin goes into the ninth spot. Hello, Johnny Benson, slow down the back stretch. Oh, Betty Crocker going for a ride. John Turner, what's on with Benson? It's a motor problem, Benny. In fact, two laps ago, he radioed in and told the crew the engine is going. It might last another 20 laps, but doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Engine problems for Johnny Benson Jr. And he led 11 laps here this evening, and that was the first time he had to lead a NASCAR Winston Cup race since Watkins Glen. You know, I told it a little bit ago I was a little confused about these guys. Now, the fellows in front, they had stopped and changed tires, and I didn't think that 15 or 20 laps on these tires would make that big a di difference, but obviously it does, as Jeff Gordon just blows by Burton. Jeff Gordon goes to the lead, and he has not led yet tonight, but as he comes down and crosses the line, he gets credit for it, so give him five bonus points. Ray Everham looks on, and his driver, Jeff Gordon. And now, this is a little bit earlier. We've been doing this lately, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. But he's got the car to do it, so... Hey, a smoker here, and that's Bill Elliott. We reported earlier that he was having a problem. Now he's really having a problem with that McDonald's Ford. Down to the apron of the racetrack, however. I don't think he got any oil on the racetrack. I think that was just some smoke uh, internally, and I don't believe he got any oil on the racetrack. I don't think we'll see a caution play. And so far, we haven't seen a caution. If he can get back to the pits. Here, second and third in the point standings, battling for position. Battling for 10th position. Dale Derrick, Mark Martin. Meanwhile, this battle is going on about seven and three-quarter seconds behind the leader. We see Kyle Petty, a little smoke there, first of Kyle Petty and Jeff Green, the 44 and the 46, they're involved in a battle for position, the 21st spot. And Terry Labonte is also on the same lap as those three cars. Not on the lead lap, but on the same as Petty and... Oh, did, oh. Burton, did Gordon hit the wall? He was close. Boy, if he didn't, he came awfully close. He backed out, nevertheless, and gave the lead up to Jeff Burton again. We oh. see Rick Mass, a 75 car, trying to get by Jeff Burton. Can't quite make it. Rick is several laps down, six laps. Yeah, he, he, he was one of those drivers. He was five laps down, got caught up in that pit stop situation, the green flag pit stop situation. Now, what's Ray Everham saying? Uh, lap traffic. Didn't like that. Yeah, lap traffic. Okay. Well, it has put Jeff Burton back at the front of this field now. Jeff Gordon has led some laps, four as a matter of fact, and picks up the five bonus points that are very critical in his battle for his third NASCAR Winston Cup championship. And you can see that Gordon now is 239 ahead of Mark Martin as we progress through this race here at Richmond. We're at the one halfway mark, halfway around through this race, 200 laps completed, and Jeff Burton picks up the $10,000 for leading at the halfway mark. When this occurred.
Here's Jerry. They were about to bring Todd Bodine in any way. His feet were burning in the car, and he was overcome with heat. Apparently, the inside of the car was so hot, he was having trouble breathing. They had already run Dick Trickle down here, and Trickle was standing by in the pits. They were hoping to get a caution flag to be able to get the 91 car in and put Trickle in it. The problem was, they didn't want to be the reason for the caution flag, but now they've got their flag. Trickle has the helmet on and will stand by to go in the 91 car. Here comes Todd down pit road with a lot of damage on the left side of that car and pit road is open so here they come. See that Jeff Gordon is the leader. There's Rusty Wallace. John Kernan. Kenny Irwin is in a great run. He's in the top ten also. Kevin LePage right behind him around a wedge going into Kevin LePage's car. But Kenny Irwin said hey the car's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. Jeff Burton the leader is in. Here's Bill Weber. Burton's getting right side tires and then I'll get left side tires and fuel. They're going to make a track bar adjustment and return to the original air pressure. The 28 is already out and Gordon is on pit road. Jerry's there. And they've already changed wide right side tires. Now the Rainbow Warriors going to work on the left side. Burton is out of the pit as Gordon's crew continues to work down here toward the end of the pit road. They drop it off the deck. Here comes Burton. There goes Gordon. And they nearly touch exiting the pit. Wallace is out as they exit down in turn one. Looks like Gordon is going to come out second. Coming out third would be Rusty, and I believe Kenny Irwin and Bobby Labonte would follow that, actually, in reverse order. Labonte and then Kenny Irwin as John Andretti and Ernie Irvin come out of their pit stalls. Under caution because of an incident up in turn number three. The 91 car had slowed dramatically coming off the second corner. I don't know exactly why. We see Chad Little go in the corner, and... Chad's groove, he was going low and go up on the racetrack, and when he tried to go up to his normal groove, he didn't realize the 91 car was going to be there. They made contact, and around they go. From another angle, you see the car's up to the very top of your screen. I don't know what made Todd, why, coming off the second corner, he had slowed dramatically. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Well, perhaps he was thinking about trying to get to the pits because, as Jerry said, his feet were burning and he was also trying uh, to maintain consciousness, perhaps. And you can see Chad uh, knock down some, what are those, filled with water? Water barrels, yeah. 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 Well, I guess they're not no, water they're bags. Yeah. Well, that makes cleanup a lot easier, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I don't think Chad hurt his car too bad. Boy, he was a rocket ship when the incident occurred. We will check in on that when we return to Richmond International Raceway. 208 laps completed here with Jeff Burton, the leader. In Murray, Utah, a lot of folks like to... Came in and first, came out second. Burton and him uh, swapped. Hamilton lost three. Rusty Wallace gained one. And Ken Schrader lost four. Bill can update Burton. Well, a lot of discussion going on in the Jeff Burton pit. We told you they wanted to make an air pressure adjustment to return the air pressure to what it was prior to the previous pit stop. Well, they didn't make that decision until it was too late. Burton was already coming down pit road. So they wanted to get another half pound in the right front tire. Only they didn't get that done. They're concerned about how the car is going to handle in this situation. Burton has been looking for more forward fight throughout the evening. We'll be watching. He is the race leader. We're about to go back to green after a caution that came out on lap 205. And here's what happened. We see Todd Bodine, the 91 car, coming off turn two. I saw him slow dramatically. I didn't realize that it almost spun. And he's very slow off the corner when he goes down in turn three. That's when he makes contact with Chad Little. Gary? And Todd Bodine's feet had been burning, and finally the heat had gotten to it. They'd been calling to get someone. They were going to bring him up in a couple of laps anyway, but the contact, of course, took place, and that's what brought out the caution flag. Now, when the car came down pit road, Todd got out of the car, and they helped him to an ambulance. He's been taken to the care center, where he will probably get some IV fluids, oh. and we'll update it. Boy, Kyle Petty just did not turn when he headed for turn number one. May have lost the right, right front, huh, Benny? Looks like it. The car just went straight. He got to yep. turn one, and the car just went straight. Now we've got a bunch of cars trying to get a lapse back as no one got back. Cannot do it. Slow down now, guys. Slow down. Boy, Kyle really took a shot. A I was just saying you stay tight because the car is coming back at you. See Kyle moving around. Yep. Like he's taking his gloves off. The steering wheel is Hit off. Hit the right front pretty hard there. John Kernan. Pretty bad, buddy. 
And what Kyle's told his crew on the uh, radio is that the throttle hung wide open uh -huh. on him, and that's what caused him. He, when he went to let off to go into the turn, it didn't come back up off the floor, and so he went in there full tilt and hit the wall hard. Wow. Well, there was obviously some kind of mechanical problem because there was smoke from the car as he obviously was trying to hit the brakes, and then the car shot right for the outside wall. How lucky is Jeff Gordon? Watch this. He's going to go between the leader and the second-place car. Mm. Wow. Boom. Well, he did hit that wall hard. Came back down. Fortunately, it stayed high enough that the other cars could go underneath him. You see, that smoke is brakes. He's nailing the brakes, trying to get the thing slowed down. But obviously, when the accelerator's on, brakes is not going to overcome that 750 horsepower. The helicopter. See, he's the second car in line there. Trying to move on the inside of Jeff Burton, and all of a sudden, he realizes that the car is, the accelerator is still stuck open. He just barely missed Jeff Burton. He yeah. could have taken him out real easily. Six inches, maybe? Yep. Man. Look at all these cars going by. Four or five abreast trying to get by Kyle, sitting in the middle of the racetrack. Mm. Tough break. Kyle is out of the car and walking away, so that's good news. But the car is very extensively damaged. And we're under our fifth caution of the evening in the XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400. We'll be back in just a moment. Tonight, we had the perfect legendary mentor. list of winners. Back in 1955, brothers Tim and Fonty Flock made it a family affair at Richmond, finishing first and second in a 100-mile race. It was one of four 1-2 finishes that year for the brothers and teammates. And it was one of Tim Flock's 18 victories on the way to the 1955 NASCAR Grand National Championship. Together, the Flock brothers teamed up to win 22 of the 40 races run in the 55 season. NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Some of the legendary winners here at Richmond International Raceway. John is with Johnny Benson. Back in the garage area, Johnny's changed to his street clothes. They've already loaded the car onto the hauler. A short night for them, but Johnny, your thoughts are uh, kind of somewhere else right now. Yeah, they sure are. You know, lost a good friend uh, last weekend at Minnesota, and, uh, you know, Chris Bradley and all of our thoughts and prayers go out with them. And, you know, lost a great friend and a guy that helped us go to the championship. Worked for us four years, and... Um, you know, we both got our first ASA championship together, and, you know, we're both real proud of that. So it's, uh, you know, a huge loss for all their family and, and of course, myself and our families. And, like I said, we're real close with them, with all the Bradleys. Johnny, of course, referring to the incident during an ASA race last Monday in which Adam Petty was involved in a tragedy, tragedy on pit road. Flag comes out. We're back to racing here at Richmond on the 222nd lap. And again, Jeff Burton is the leader, and he's got Steve Grissom now between himself and Jeff Gordon running second. is pretty good. The Kodiak Chevrolet is pretty good, but he's not a match right now for Jeff Burton. Yeah, he was one of those cars that got caught down that, that lap on the green flag pit stops. He was uh, had moved himself up into the top 15 and was running well, but you're right. Burton's got a little bit too much. On board with Bobby Labonte, who's running in fourth. Just ahead is Ricky Rudd, who's celebrating his 42nd birthday today. Happy birthday to Ricky. Wasn't a very good birthday, though. Kyle Benny didn't have a very good day either, did he, John? No, he didn't, Benny, but the good news is Kyle has been checked out in the infield care center. Kyle, you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I just told him. I had something happen to me. I've, I've been driving a race car fortunate, God bless, forever. Never had it happen. The throttle hung. Uh, we'd been having some carburetor trouble. I'd, been, I'd drop back, and it'd come back, and, and whatever. And um, going off in the first corner, I hung, and I see Burton on the outside, and Gordon on the outside. I'm thinking, this is good. I'm going to wipe out everybody going in the first corner. But I reached up and slapped it off, and uh, was fortunate.
unfortunate. Tore the wall down, but that's okay. And uh, again, I'd like to say, uh, send my condolences to the Bradley family and, and let them know we're still thinking about them. And uh, we tried tonight, but just come up a little short. Okay, this is going to be real sure. good. Three abreast. And they just about crashed off turn two to try to finish the job here, but they still <laughs> able to continue on. Now, Chad Little lost lap when he spun with the 91 car. Whoa, here. Look at it. That's Sterling Marlin, and he did not hit the wall, but it looks like there's a tire flat on that car. Looks like the left front tire is flat. Yes, it is. Boy, that's a miracle he kept it out of the wall over in turn two. And I, would, I saw these cars come off second corner just a moment ago. This is probably where he cut the tire was coming off the second corner. Going down to turn one on the outside of the 40 car, on the outside of the 22. And right there, Benny, they're going to touch, I believe. That. There we see Ward Burton go up. Yeah, they're a bit loose when he goes up. And there, they're four branched off the corner. And that probably cut the tire of Sterling Marlin. Yeah, right I'm there. sure it did. Skinner went right between them. Hardly any doubt there's any contact there. As he goes in the corner, and the left front tire is flat. Jerry has more from Pit Road. They just pulled their left front tire off with a huge gash in the outside of the sidewall. So two left side tires are now Sterling is back on the racetrack. The 28 and the 33 are racing for the seventh position. Kenny Irwin and Ken Schrader. And again, we compliment Irwin on his incredible run tonight. But just ahead is Kevin LePage, who's also on a good run. He's sixth. Yeah, he has moved up from seventh position on the restart so he's uh, working his way towards the front and wow. both Kevin LePage started 38 and Kenny Irwin started 36 so as Ned and I talked about at the very top of the show it really doesn't matter where you start you can work your way to the front if you have a good race car and we see Kevin LePage right now trying to get on the inside of Bobby Hamilton and take that spot away that's fifth place Indeed, here is LePage to the inside of Hamilton. They come down the straightaway here and run wheel to wheel. Now LePage inching ahead. And taking over the fifth spot. Uh, don't be so quick. Well, not yet. So quick. Bobby Hamilton might have a little something to say about that, but I don't know. He was able to get down there, so looks like he's able to accelerate off the corner. He still can't complete the pass. You know? Now, finally, LePage, I think, will get the spot. If he can just go up the racetrack, clear. Spot or clear. There you go. When you can use all that racetrack, cut off second corner, go up against that outside retaining wall, it really helps your momentum and helps your lap speed. LePage fifth and Hamilton in sixth. There's Kenny Schrader in seventh place. Kenny Irwin now back to eighth. Dale Jarrett is running in ninth, and Mark Martin is tenth. Pretty good run in this car since he took it over. Three finishes of 17th or better in four races. Back up front, meanwhile, it's Jeff Burton leading Jeff Gordon by just a little over two seconds. How much is that on the racetrack? That much. Here, third place car, Rusty Wallace. Three quarters of a second behind Jeff Gordon. There he is. The last car, Steve Grissom, between. And the fourth place car is Bobby Labotti, and the left car of Ricky Rudd, several laps down, is between them, he and Rusty Wallace. Labotti in fourth place. In comes Kevin LePage in the Prime Star Ford with Terry Labotti, a lap car between those two. And then the Ken Schrader car in seventh. Right behind him is Kenny Irwin in the 28. Then comes Dale Jarrett in the 88. Then Mark Martin. Mark Martin, of course, in 10th place. The next car, after we see Jeff Green go by, there's Brett Bodine. Jeremy Mayfield, there is their 11th place car. 
Jimmy Spencer in a backup car. I think we've told you that enough today. There's Daryl Walter. And 31, Mike Skinner. Fast for second round, fastest qualifier. He is currently in the 12th spot. Ever see Skinner? Lowe's home improvement Chevrolet. Remember, John Andretti was a lap down a while ago, but he's back on the lead lap now in the 13th spot. About nine and three quarter seconds behind Jeff Burton. And Mike Skinner had been a lap down, too. He got it back, and so did the next car, which is the car number 81 of Kenny Wallace. He is now in the 14th position. Or did he get by John Andretti for 13th? He's 14th. Jeff Bodine, again, another car that got his lap back on the a couple of caution flags ago. We see Jeff Bodine come off the corner. He's in 15th position. These cars are 96-1. Several cars racing laps down. There we see Ernie Irving come in. The Skittles Pontiac. He is the last car on the lead lap in 16th position. So there you have all of the cars that are on the lead lap currently as Jeff Burton is pulling away from Jeff Gordon. He's lengthened the interval from two seconds on lap 236 to almost three seconds on lap 240. But you can see that Burton, how consistent he is, four laps at 22.6 and one at 22.7. And those last couple of laps that Jeff Gordon ran, 22.8, 22.9. So can Jeff close in and make it another win here at Richmond? Well, right now, Jeff Burton says, no, I'm the best car out there. We'll come back with more live coverage in just a moment from Richmond International Raceway. So we may be doing that this year as Jeff Burton is leading this fifth race. Of course, the short track season ends in a couple of weeks at Martinsville. Talk about short track racing. Here's a perfect example. We'll see Rick Mass, a 75 car, Ted Musgrave in 96. Came off the corner, Rick Mass just rubbing up the side of him. Watch this as Sterling Marlin sees this. And that's what cuts those right fronts, those front tires down, or any kind of tire down. When you go up and rub against that sheet metal, if there's any kind of jagged metal there at all, it will cut that tire. And Jeff Burton is pulling away again a little bit each lap. He's now with three and a quarter seconds in front of Jeff Gordon. There are 148 laps to go down to Bill Weber. And crew chief Frank Stoddard just told Jeff Burton, you're 3.4 seconds ahead of the second place car. Now Burton's X-Side Ford is running extremely well. Remember we told you they missed the air pressure adjustment on the right front tire and has not affected the performance of the machine. In fact, the only thing that's not working perfectly on that car is Burton's radio. He can hear the crew, but communication from driver to crew is very scratchy. They've changed radios, and they have discussed a hand signal procedure in case the radio goes out. Meanwhile, there's some battles still raging on the racetrack. Kevin LePage, Bobby Labonte, and Bobby Hamilton. Those back three cars are on the lead lap and going for position. LePage trying to pass Bobby Labonte for fourth on the outside. Looks like he has the position. LePage in the blue and yellow, number 16, up on the outside. Now he has Steve Grissom right in front of him. Ricky Rudd down on the inside. Those cars run side to side, so there's not really anywhere for those cars on the lead lap to go. See Bobby Hamilton right there with him in the four car. Uh-oh. Whoops. Grissom slipped just a little bit. And that allowed that Labonte, Bobby Labonte to get on the inside. And now, yes. LePage, Kevin LePage is hung on the outside. That allows Bobby Hamilton to go to the inside of LePage. Four rookies going for Rookie of the Year honors are in this race, and that's where they're running. LePage is fifth, Irwin eighth. They do 22nd and Steve Park 29th. So Kenny Schrader tried to drive back out both these cars on the outside. There he goes in the corner on the outside of the page. Unfortunately, Kenny is going to run across the 41 car of Steve Grissom, just like the page did. Grissom is in 17th position, one lap down. 
Now here comes the page once again, back on the inside of Hamilton. As their food line on board camera looks back at these guys. Page has a good race car, doesn't it? They aren't too far behind the third place car of Rusty Wallace. Even with this side to side racing. Less than a second. And we'll show you an interval leaderboard here as Jeff Burton crosses the stripe and Jeff Gordon passes the stripe 3.28 seconds later. Looks like the fastest car on the track. And he's running on the outside of Kevin LePage now. And there, those guys are first and second. They, you know something? That is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen that before in my life. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, most of the time that slow you down about a third of a second to lap, but I'm bidding for them. Now, Ricky Rudd, we see up there just a moment ago racing the side of Steve Grissom has just backed off and let these cars go. Because Rudd had a brake problem early on. He's 15 laps down, so certainly doesn't only impede the progress of the leaders. Jeff Gordon with the fastest lap that last time around. We'll check it again. Still about three and a quarter seconds between first and second, and Bobby Hamilton going to rank number one this lap, it looks like. See what he's going to show Bobby Labonte that he is the fastest car. Got some teammates doing some pretty good racing back here, Irwin and Jarrett. Yeah, they've been going at it for about 15 laps. What's it doing right now? And Hamilton challenges Bobby Labonte for the fourth spot, and Hamilton gets it. Oh, he went to the corner and just goes to the top of the racetrack. Looked like something had broken. He goes to the top so quickly. He said, man, I had worked so hard to get that position, but he's, he's still going to be able to keep it, looks like. You wonder, as hard as they've been racing here, have they been using up their tires, making them a little bit hotter than, than they would if they were running in single file? But they're still catching Rusty Wallace. And that last lap, Jeff Gordon had the fastest lap. Bobby Labonte has not had good finishes on short tracks. His win, of course, in 1998 has come at Talladega. John? I want to go back to what Ned was just talking about, about the guys racing a little bit too hard side by side, heating up the tires a little bit. That's exactly the problem with Kevin LePage. Radioed in and told him, I think I've heated up the tires a little bit too much. So they told him to kind of back off, take it easy, maintain his rhythm, and then if the tires will cool a little bit, the car will come back to him. Now they told me before the start of the race, they said, hey, we've got a really fast race car. It didn't show it that way in qualifying, but believe me, it is fast. The one thing they were worried about, they were sharing a pit with Jeremy Mayfield at the start of the race. That concerned them, but since the start, we've had those cautions, some cars have fallen out. Jeremy has moved to Robert Presley's pit, so that freed the 16 people up to have this pit stall all by themselves and they think they're good to go to the end in fact they're hoping for a career best finish for kevin lepage tonight's john andretti and mike skinner are trying to decide who should be in 11th and andretti is the man right now here is Jeff Burton, who, is, remember a few laps ago, he had a three and a quarter second lead on Jeff Gordon? Not anymore. No, he doesn't anymore. It's a little over a second and a half. Bill Weber, we had reported, check this AutoZone on track interval. Three seconds to 1.7, gain 1.3 seconds in just five laps. And check it now. Jeff Gordon, every lap at 22.9. You think Ray Everham is in a happy camper right now when he can look down and see that driver running the same speed every lap? And all of Burton's laps were over the 23 seconds. Ray Everham looks, as usual, very calm and collected. Talking to Jeff on the radio here at the end of 270 of 400 laps. We'll be back with more from in a moment from Richmond International Raceway. As a little skinny. It's Ned Jared, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Richmond International Raceway here in Enrico County, Virginia. 
The Pennzoil Copter Cam flying around in the crystal clear skies over the speedway tonight. And the 16 and the 2 now are battling for fourth position. Bobby Hamilton has taken third, so this is the battle for fourth. You see LePage trying his best to get that spot away. And Kenny Schrader also coming up. Not too far behind Rusty Wallace as Rusty loses fourth, goes back to fifth. And Bobby Labonte as well. Kevin LePage's best finish in NASCAR Winston Cup racing was at Bristol. He finished 10th, so he is on his best performance of the year so far. On board with Bobby Labonte, who's now seventh. The leader, meanwhile, begins to encounter some traffic. Brett Bodine is ahead, and Michael Waltrip to the left of Jeff Burton. Brett Bodine is running in 29th, and two laps down. This that is working for Jeff Gordon's advantage because we showed just a moment ago that Jeff Gordon was 1.7 seconds behind. He really hasn't gained that much. But now Burke clears himself as if of the traffic. And now Jeff is just about a second and a quarter behind. Bill Weber? And Benny, a couple of things have contributed to Burton giving up that lead. First thing is they told him to save your car. You're ahead by three and a half seconds. Frank Stoddard telling him to think about your car. The other thing is, just three or four laps ago, he radioed in. The car's a little bit loose off. Loose off. They're having tremendous difficulty hearing Burton on the radio. Two or three guys have to agree that's what he said before they acknowledge the transmission. But Burton is a little loose off, but he's also the second year race car. so far has led 128 laps. That's about how many more laps we have to go in this contest. Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader. Rusty is now fifth. Ken sixth. And Schrader goes to the inside. Tries to pick up the position. Rusty's car not quite as good as he was earlier. Oops. Slipped a little bit coming off the corner. An indication that the handle's gone away a little bit on. Rusty has led 103 laps, most of those in the very early going. Schrader takes over the fifth position, Doc. And Pemberton wants the problem with the car. He said, really, it's not loose and it's not tight. The car is just sliding all over the racetrack. Rusty hasn't been able to describe exactly what it is, but we can see it from here. The car is just sliding all over the racetrack, in and out, and obviously it's, it's costing us a lot of time each way. This is another position to Bobby Labonte. So Rusty moves back to the seventh position. He was third not too many laps ago. Pretty good ways back to the next car, which is Kenny Irwin, who's back in eighth spot. Jerry Fudge, got something else for us? Rusty says it must be a tire. It must be a tire. So the crew now jumped up on the wall, and maybe he's going to come down pit road. He's actually turning the steering wheel almost a half a turn in the corner. And he said it's, it's really, really, really loose. They're discussing it here in the crew whether they should go ahead and bring him in be able to make it the rest of the way on this being their final pit stop. There's only be one more stop anyway for the lead car, but if he fits now in the green, he obviously would go a lap down at least. But as you can see, he's just trying to hang on. A moment ago, he ready and said, I'm pushing this steering wheel a lot in the corners, but right now, he looks pretty consistent holding on to the top of that steering wheel. It's Rusty's 450th NASCAR Winston Cup start, and here is Kenny Irvin in the 28th, and we ride along with Mark Martin. Kenny is eighth, and Mark is ninth. I thought we saw Kenny Irvin, he and Dale Jarrett were running side by side, but Martin's been able to get by Dale right. Jarrett, and now he's trying to work on Jarrett's teammate. Looking back. My Circuit City onboard camera at Mark Martin. Pull up on him in the corner and get a nose under it, but just right. can't 
can't pass as he comes off of the corner. Bag got a pretty good run. No oh. fair. Just a little bit of contact there with Sony Smoke. Yeah. We've seen that. Oh, and there's Rusty Wallace on pit road. You saw him peel off and head down to pit road. Jerry, he's making his way slowly to you. On 40 miles an hour, and what they think it might be is another right front tire maybe going down for Rusty Wallace, Billy Wilford, and the entire crew waiting to go over the wall. Very, very lonely place to be on pit road here, but the one good thing for Rusty, he can make it the rest of the way now. This should be his final stop. Right front tire going off. He will go ahead and probably change all four. Yes, here they come to the left side of the car. Earl Marvin, one pump, two pump from the jack. Left front tire going in. Billy Wilbur has the blood dust on his full of fuel. He is down and away. And Jeff Gordon is slowly moving in on Jeff Burton. Yes, indeed. Gordon is making the challenge on Burton here on the 291st lap. He cannot make the pass, however. Well, he don't have to make the pass right now. He's got 109 laps to make the pass. They have about a five-second lead on the third-place car, so he's led a lap. He has those five bonus points. But if I can take the lead, I might as well go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's going to do it. Yep. Well. Jeff has led 10 laps tonight, but Burton will not relinquish the position without a battle. I think Burton is running exactly in the tracks that Jeff Gordon wants to run in. say that if Jeff Gordon were in front right now, he'd be running in exactly the same place that Jeff Burton is running. Now he's going to try to stick the nose down there. Good. Good to try to do it. And again, they're not losing ground to the third place car. Bobby Hamilton staying about the same, as a matter of fact. Just a little over 103 laps to go in this 400 lap race. The XI NASCAR Select Batteries 400. It's been a good one. Right now, it's Jeff Burton leading Jeff Gordon. By Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. By UAW International Union and General Motors Corporation. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. And by the EverStart Battery. All the cold cranking power your truck, car, boat, or mower will ever need. Available at Walmart. Kevin LePage has a problem. John Kernan is there. Well, it looks like a routine pit stop. However, it is anything but routine. Just a couple of laps ago while we were in breaks, Kevin radioed in and said something blew up. Does he think he blew up the rear end because he had just had an extremely, extremely bad vibration. So now they're checking the rear. They spin the tire around just, just to check and see. So now they're telling him, to, let's go. He's going to go behind pit wall with him. Well, he had an outstanding run while he was out there. Now, Rusty Wallace lost two laps. However, he's just gotten one of them back, and the 99 and 24 are still battling side by side for the lead. And we've got all this traffic right in front of them there. We see Ted Musgrave, Kenny Wallace. Uh, thought maybe Jeff Gordon might have him that time, but now the, the guy that picks the right lane for the traffic is probably the guy that's going to come out in front. As Sterling Marlin is right in front of Jeff 
Jeff, you might not be in the right lane, but he can't go high because Jeff Burton is there. Looking back from Sterling Marlin's car. And Jeff Gordon has the lead. And Jerry has the tire off Rusty's car. Guys, take a look at this. This is where the, this is the right front tire off Rusty Wallace's car number two. Now, what the crew has told me was that this tire basically has delaminated the rubber from the radial carcass by virtue of a cut. They cut the tire, and that started the process on the inside, and it basically has separated from the radial carcass beneath this. I mean, the tire is not flat, but it was starting to come apart a little bit by virtue of having been cut on the racetrack. So you may ask, well, how about too much caster, too much camber? Look at the wear pins. The wear pins indicate that was not the case. It simply was a cut that caused the rubber to come off, and Rusty probably wouldn't have made it another lap. Well, he does again drop now one lap down. He's running in 19th position. Rusty Wallace, the pole sitter for this race. Now, if this race stays green, the others have to stop during green flag. Well, then, you know, that's putting him back in pretty good shape. And then Wallace trying his best, trying his best to stay on the lead lap. As we watch his Tabasco hot zone, and Jeff Gordon gets by him. Kenny is in 14th position. So now there will be just 13 cars on the lead lap. I just saw Jerry Nadeau slow down to make the pit stop for the Cartoon Network automobile. He was running in 20th position. See Kenny Walls pumping those brakes, trying to get that pedal build up. Here comes the second place car, Jeff Burton. Seventh place battle between Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett. John has more on Kevin LePage. John? Bob Kevin has pulled it into the garage area and hit the rear end here. They're going to replace the rear end here and get it back out. Tough break for Kevin. Yeah, he was really running good. Got himself up in the top five, had a great race car. There's Steve Grissom going by both Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin. He just came in out of the pits not long ago, so he has new tires on his car. Steve is three laps down in 29. Well, those new tires sure make a difference, don't they? Mm -hmm. Not as much here as they did at Darlington last week, but they do make a big difference. We've already seen that it made a half to three quarters of a second to lap difference. Dolan back down to the right of your screen, and here is Kenny Wallace now making a pit stop after going a lap down. Kenny Wallace pulls to his pit stall. They will make a chassis adjustment for tire stop and fuel. All these teams will be able to get to the finish under green flag conditions. They won't need to come back to pit road. They swing around to the left side. Kenny will get his left side tires, pack it full of fuel, and he'll be on his way in the square D4. Jeremy Mayfield coming down pit road. Mike Skinner is in the pits as well. So is Derek Cope. Here comes a Napa field summary for you. Points position changes. Nobody in the top five changing positions. And you see Jimmy Spencer has gone a lap down. He is in 12th position. Jeff Burton moves up a spot. Mayfield down a spot. Jeremy has not been in the ballpark practically all weekend. He's two laps down now in 22nd position. Did not qualify well and is not racing well tonight. Now we see Mike Skinner, the Lowe's Home Improvement Chevrolet. He just made a pit stop, put on four fresh tires, so he should be able to drive by these cars. Yeah, he'll blow them right off. Dave Marks is in the pits now in the Realtree Chevrolet. We are going to start seeing pit stops by the leaders before too much longer. They were last in on lap 207. Right now, we're on lap 317. Back with more from Richmond International Raceway in a moment. We did have others pit stops. Uh, Jeff Burton came in for a stop. Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett were in. Kenny uh, Irvin was also in. Right now, Jimmy Spencer is the leader of the race. He has not hit it, obviously, because we saw him go a lap down just a few laps ago. And Jeff Gordon has come out ahead of Jeff Burton, so with 
Jimmy does have to make a pit stop. Jeff Gordon will be the leader of the race. Right now he's second. I don't know if he will or not because we've seen that so far tonight Jeff Burton on fresh tires is a little quicker than Jeff Gordon. It's after they run about 70, 80 laps that Jeff Gordon seems to be a little faster. So right now, and Jeff Burton is not that far behind. Down to Bill Weber. And that could be an advantage because they've got less than 80 laps to run. So if Burton's car is better on a shorter period of time, the fact they waited to pick could help them. Here's something else. Burton's crew has four tires ready to put on that car. But since they knew this was going to be their last stop, they changed the set just before Burton did it. They wanted to get a better set, a better match on the car for this final run. They also made an air pressure adjustment, and Jeff Burton is running Jeff Gordon down. Yes, he certainly is. He is within a car length and closing in. Looking to the bottom of Jeff Gordon. He comes off the corner. He's there. Now, remember before on new tires, he was a good bit faster than Jeff Gordon. Had run a long time before Gordon was able to come back up there and challenge him. He pulled out to about a five-second lead on Jeff Gordon, as a matter of fact. And then Jeff Gordon started coming back ever so slowly. But now this is working to Gordon's advantage. If he can just keep Burton down there for a little bit. Oh! Burton came off the corner. And Jeff Gordon said, I think I better back off the gas. So Jeff Burton does take the lead. And another battle rages between Bobby Labonte and Kenny Irwin. This is for the eighth position. Still there. John has a report on the 28 car. That 28 car has been really good all night long. In fact, they haven't made any adjustments since the last pit stop. They took on only four tires. Sitting back out of pretty good pit stop with Kenny Earl Jr. He was running the time. Jeff Bodine also took on four tires. No adjustments for him. He is working for the top 10. And Irwin's teammate. Dale Jarrett is also right there. Now, all of these it's cars are a lap down right now as a result of Jimmy Spencer not having made a pit stop yet. Mark Martin just passed Jimmy Spencer, and, or I think he did, and got back on the lead lap. Just a couple of laps ago, we see Bobby Labonte, the interstate batteries, Pontiac, trying to get on the inside of Kenny Irwin. Uh -oh. Little contact, and wow, Labonte got the thing sideways. Sure did. Nice save by Bobby. Here is Jimmy Spencer, who is on old tires, but nevertheless in the lead by about seven seconds. But look at the difference in between old tires and new tires. Once again, it's three quarters of a second. We compared these tires early on 200 laps ago. And at that point, it was three quarters of a second. And, and caution, Earnhardt has stopped on the racetrack. And you're going to see a mad scramble back to the start and finish line here as Dale Jarrett and... And Kenny Irwin trying to pass Jimmy Spencer, but Bobby Labonte might be the only one that'll be able to do that before they get back to the start-finish line. Bobby Labonte does get back in the lead lap. But everybody else will stay a lap down, including Kenny Irwin, John Andretti, and others. I wonder now what the leader's going to do. Are they going to stop? Hmm. What's a caution for, to begin with? Earnhardt's Earnhardt car stopped. Oh, yeah. Earnhardt stopped on the backstretch. Pay attention, Bob. I will. As a matter of fact, I guess. That's our right. moving again. Yep. Well, that's interesting. Well, what are they going to do? Here comes Spencer, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to stop. What about the 24? Is he going to stop? The 99? They're, they're coming right the pit road. Are they going to stop? No, they rode by. Down to Jerry. But one car that won't make a pit stop and got a huge, huge break comes down pit road now with the big no bull on the hood. We told you the story earlier. It's a backup car, the same one he used in New Hampshire, but had a top 15 finish. And now, Harold Stott will clean the windshield. Donnie Wingo and the crew have already changed right side tires. Now coming to the left side of the car. Now also the car number two comes in, Rusty Wallace. It's a break for him as well as the six and the 18. Spencer is away. Now the two car, right side tire. Remember Rusty Wallace had that car problem with the right front tire twice tonight. It will come in and now get fresh cover. And this car was very, very good on fresh tire. We're continuing on up pit road on the car number 18 of Bobby Labonte. And they completed there. 
back here as Rusty down the way. The six car out. Let's check in with John Kernan. Dale Earnhardt had radioed into his crew and told them the reason he stopped on the back stretch. Apparently, an ignition problem. The engine just quit. I saw him come down very slowly down the front straightaway just before that, before he got around to the back. He said it got stopped. He switched ignitions, and finally, he got it to fire up. Here's Bill Weber. Waiting for Kenny Wallace to come down pit road. This caution saved him. He believes he has a flat right rear tire and was going to pit that time. Instead, the caution came out. Wallace stayed out, limped around the track, now pulls it into his pit stall. They will go to the right side first, jack it up, put on the right side tires. Then they'll check and see if they want to change the lefts because they just put on the left side. So Kenny Wallace saved by the caution. He gets four tires, and of course, he has plenty of fuel to reach the finish. There are just 67 laps to go in this 400 lapper at Richmond International Raceway. Jeff and Jeff Bodine and Ernie Irvin. And those cars are on the tail end of the lead lap. You saw Ernie Irvin stay in front of the leader. Oh, almost in contact. There is some contact. Clear right on, on. Clear and on. Jeff Ford goes oh, in the, in go. the lead. Clear. Stay with it. Got one looking inside. You're clear, though. That should have been a All major, clear. major catastrophe there. And it. Jeff Gordon chose the right lane, inside. and he's now in front of Jeff Burton by a couple of car lengths. And Ted Musgrave is between them. Meanwhile, Ernie Irvin just will not give up. He wants to stay in the lead lap. Does he have enough car? Looks like he does. Looks like he does. He does stay in front. Oh, little bump from Gordon. We asked the question at the beginning of the show, when is this freight train going to derail the Jeff Gordon train? Well, it's still on track tonight. Here's the Bud Race recap. Jeff Gordon is the leader. He has only led 28 of the 344 laps. We've had 21 lead changes in one of the most competitive races that we've seen all year. Six caution flags for 52 laps. And the average speed a little over 93 miles an hour. And just a lot of great side-by-side -side racing like we're seeing here right now. Here is the long list of those who have led a lap. Jeff Gordon has or Jeff Burton, rather, has led the most laps, 100. Whoa, oh, Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett gets hit from behind and spins. Mark Martin it, almost did coming off the turn. Back to the line now. No caution. It'll come out. Stay with it. All clear. And it's going to allow several cars. Jeff Burton retakes the lead, and here comes the 96 caution. car. Caution is out. Caution is out. Get him now. And Ernie, Ernie Irvin is going to be, uh, he's going to get a losing lap. Not going to get the lap back. John Andretti and Kenny Irwin did get their laps back. And one reason they threw the caution flag, and I think I really applaud NASCAR for doing that. The smoke going out in turn one was so heavy that if the cars had come off the corner, racing down into the corner, I don't think they would have been able to see properly. So NASCAR threw the caution flag. Great call. Now that smoke, you can see all the smoke. It's dissipated about ten for about ten times what it was before. Yeah. All right, here we go again with the replay. Gordon and Burton battling for the lead. <laughs> oh, a little contact, more yeah. contact. Now the leaders are all on pit road. And here's here the situation the with yeah. Dale Jarrett on the inside of Rusty Wallace. Now, Mark Martin, watch Mark. Comes there, you see, and he just barely clips Dale Jarrett, and down to the inside he goes. Meanwhile, Burton is in. Here's Bill. Jeff Burton has already got his right side tires. The left side tires are on. A quick stop. He's on his way. John Kernan. Left side's going on for Kenny Irwin. No adjustments. No adjustments. Wait, now he goes a very fine. Let's go to the 24 pit and Dr. Punch. A very quick four tire change for Jeff Gordon. No adjustments whatsoever. He is down and away. Likewise, Bobby Hamilton has been in the Kodak Chevrolet and the quality care crew now waiting on Dale Jarrett after that car looped around twice to bring out the caution flag here as we are working lap 348. 52 laps remain here at Richmond International Raceway. Back with the conclusion after this. As the field gets lined up for the restart, this is what brought out the caution. Well, Bobby Labonte back there makes some contact with Mark Martin.
That there, we see the six car, Mark Martin. I think he's going to get just a little bump from Bobby Labonte. He, when he straightens the car up, he goes up and taps Dale Jarrett in the left rear, and DJ nails the gas, trying to keep the car under control. This is on board with Mark Martin. Just watch and listen. And from Bobby Labonte's on board. Chain reaction deal. Okay, green flag is waving again. Here we go. Jimmy Spencer and Ernie Urban did not come in, so Spencer is the leader of the race, and Urban is at the tail end of the lead lap. Rusty Wallace is second, Bobby Labonte third, Mark Martin fourth, Jeff Burton fifth, and Gordon is sixth. and the 24 are mired back here in traffic. With four fresh tires, that's one advantage. Rusty Wallace battling with, the, with Spencer for the lead. Here's come Mike Skinner Whoa. on the inside. Trying to go three abreast in there. Look there, they're gonna try to come off that turn three abreast. Wow. Wisely, Rusty Wallace, I think, backed out of the gap. This is not gonna work, and you're right. And here comes Bobby Labonte on the inside. There's Labonte trying to take the by Rusty Wallace for second. Here comes Jeff Burton. The 31 of Mike Skinner is not on the lead lap. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, he's, if he passes Jimmy Spencer, he will be. Oh, Labonte and Rusty Wallace. And look at Jeff Burton on the inside. Three of us. Labonte backs out. Let's go in the corner. Wisely. And look at Burton. He's going somewhere now. Now here comes Jeff Gordon with those four fresh tires. And once again, they're three abreast. Jeff Burton again going three abreast. Watch it, he comes off the corner and turns that thing. He's on the inside. Oh, and he gets banged. Rusty, how did he save that? Saved it. He saved that car. I don't know how he did it. Unbelievable. Well, let's see. He's still right on the back bumper, Burton. Saturday night racing at its best. It is. He was completely sideways, saved it, didn't lose a position. And now here's Jeff Ford trying to drive on the outside of Rusty Wallace. Remember last time he passed Rusty Wallace on the outside? <laughs> <laughs> Relax, PP. It's only a race. That's what passed him on the inside. He remembered what happened last time. <laughs> so Jeff Gordon now moves up to third. It's still Spencer Burton. And then Wallace. And once again, they're going to try and three it now. Burton says, I don't like that three abreast too good. Ernie Irvin trying to hang on to the lead lap. He is in 12th position. And Mike Skinner, as you can see, pulled away from Spencer, so he is in 11th at the tail end of the lead lap. That's for the lead, the 99 and 23. Here comes Gordon. Gonna make the three abreast? No, that won't work. Now he might. Now he's going to be inside of Spencer. And Spencer slides up the racetrack. And Jimmy Spencer falls to third. Is now Jeff Burton has the lead, and Gordon is second. Okay, now he's going to try to put Ernie a lap down. Ernie running in 12 spot. Burton has the fresher tires. Ernie's been out there a while with his. Unable to save it. He hit the wall big time with the back end of the car. Back in, he put the, tires on the, the car 
Russian waves once again for the eighth time tonight. Got a lot of damage to the rear of that interstate batteries Pontiac. It's amazing the thing will even pull. Right. You know, he, he crashed going in turn three and the wreck started off turn two. That's amazing how hard he hit yeah. after going that distance. Scrubbed off a little speed, but still hit very hard. Here it is again. There was he's on the inside of Spencer and looked like Rusty Wallace yeah. might have made some contact with him. And here goes Labonte. And somehow Rusty goes through all this. All these cars somehow get through this. And Rusty and Bobby Hamilton, Mark Martin all coming in the pits. As we watch again here. a lot of smoke but it dissipates pretty early let's go to the pits and jerry rusty wallace one of the three cars that did not pit on the previous caution flag now they've got four fresh tires on he is out likewise mark martin goes by at the end of pit road and bobby hamilton exiting also with a four tire change bobby labani meanwhile takes off the steering wheel lowers the net and obviously is not a very happy race driver at the moment. He was running in the top five when contact with Rusty Wallace sent him into the outer wall in turn three. Burton is the leader of the race with Jeff Gordon running in second. Ken Schrader is third. Jimmy Spencer is fourth. And John Andretti is fifth. Now, John Andretti started up front, got a lap down, but has come back to run again in the top five. They're not going green this time, so let's go to John Kernan. In the garage area with Bobby Labonte, who's already changed clothes. Bobby, you okay? Yeah, yeah, a little sore right here, but uh, when the rearview mirror come flying at me, I thought it hit pretty hard, but, uh, you know, I guess we uh, just got, you know, gotten wrecked back there on the back straightaway, you know. Kind of know what happened, but, uh, you know, that's part of it, you know, Saturday night racing, you know, this interstate Pontiac ran good. These guys did a great job. I think we're in the top five, you know, right there at the end. So it's a great little battle, and, uh, you know, at least I was able to run pretty good on this track. It's kind of uh, had me a little bit the past couple years. So, you know, we just had a good run, but just didn't end up that way. Yeah. Thank you. Bobby Labonte finished 34th here a year ago and finished in eighth position in the June race. Well, it looks like Kenny Irwin has a tire rubs. understand he and the 43 car had an encounter. So he's not looks like he's going to pit road. Yes he is. Oh my goodness mm -hmm. gracious. Now they're still not going they're still not going green. Nope. They got such they got such a mess trying to get these cars lined up. See him back there three abreast. Yep. Here's Kenny in the pits. Take your time. See really the right look at that right front. That's what they're trying to fix mm -hmm. when the right front was rubbing the tire. We're all one to go, guys. Changing four tires. Hey, Robbie, who are we going to go behind? He relinquishes the uh, sixth position, but he's only going to drop to tenth because hey, there are go. only 40 ten 200, cars 40 200. Robbie, on behind. the lead lap. Last car, one lap down. Last car, lead lap. Don't forget, tomorrow we have more auto racing for you here on ESPN. It begins with RPM today at 12.30 Eastern Time over on the Deuce. Then the Memphis 200 from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series at 1 o'clock with Dave Spain. And at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, the Kart FedEx Championship Series heads for Laguna Seca and the Grand Prix of Monterey featuring the Texaco 300. I tell you, those Craftsman trucks are just about as good as NASCAR has on the Touring Division right now. Of course, this is going to be pretty good. This is the last 29 laps. Green is out. We've had 24 lead changes tonight, the most on a three-quarter mile track, 25 in February of 1991. Up front, Jeff Burton in the 99, Jeff Gordon in the 24. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Jeff yep, sure does. Darlington last week. There's Darrell Walters, the Vasco car. Gordon is going by. Meanwhile, Schrader, outside pole sitter, right behind Jeff Gordon. Come on. Eddie Schrader's had a great run tonight. Jimmy Spencer, fourth place car. 
fifth and back in sixth position is Rusty Wallace who has persevered through some ups and downs this evening. He's in the sixth spot. Right behind him is Mark Martin in seventh, Bobby Hamilton eighth. Bob, I'm sure that some fans will wonder what said Rusty Wallace was two laps down one time after he made a green flag pit stop a little bit early. But when everybody else made great green flag pit stops, that put him back. And we've mentioned that it would once they made those green flag pit stops, so it put him back uh, on the lead lap there. See Mike Skinner back there. Once again, I got to get a call for Skinner because he was a lap down. He's fought hard. He's back on the lead lap running in ninth spot. Jeff Burton will pick up the five bonus points for leading the most laps here tonight. The total is 178 and counting. Oh, Dale Jarrett and Chad Little get together off of turn four. And once again, Jarrett spins, and there is no other car involved. No caution as of yet. If Jarrett can get the car rolling, he will not bring out a caution, and that is the situation. He's had a tough night. Yes, he has. That's a second spin for Dale tonight. Here comes Jeff Burton. There comes Jeff Gordon. Less than a second interval between first and second, and then just a matter of car lengths. Back to third place, Ken Schrader. Stay with us. This thing is far from over. Jeff Burton's hands, because we've seen that for 40, 50 laps, he has been a, a little bit better than Gordon. It's after that, after that period of time that Jeff Gordon is able to make up the difference. So I don't know if there's enough time left with 17 to go for Jeff Gordon to catch up. Here comes Schrader and Andretti and Mark Martin. Those cars running third, fourth, and fifth. And the last couple of laps, Mark Martin has been the fastest car on the racetrack. A reminder that ESPN Sports Center is coming up after the conclusion of this race. Sammy Sosa gets number 30. Also report on the U.S. Open. 60. I'm sorry, 60. And how about Florida State, huh? Come on, Wolfpack. How about that? <laughs> North Carolina State Wolfpack, huh? A complete report coming up on Sports Center. We got 30 home runs coming. Well, it was half of 60. Oh, I see. Does that explain it? Yes, certainly. <laughs> I don't understand it perfectly. It says a lot for me. Here comes Mark Martin. Well, you see some damage on the 43 on the left rear quarter panel there as Mark tries to make the uh, make pass and do some changes in the points here. Jeff Burton's going to move up a couple of positions. And the field summary shows you that Bobby Labonte, because of that incident, is going to lose two. And Dreddy moves into the top ten. Perry Labonte will lose a couple of spots. Bobby Hamilton with his great run will go gain a couple of spots. There's our leader. One second. One second to lead. I'll keep an eye on that, folks, and just see if Jeff Gordon was able to start closing in on Burton. We've got 12 laps to go. Last time it was 107. This time it was 0.9. He gained 17 hundredths of a second. Jeff Gordon did that last lap. And that's plenty. If he can gain that every lap, then he's got plenty of time to catch it. Well, we've seen this picture before. <laughs> this is a very familiar scenario. Never seen Mark Martin closing on the back bumper of Kenny Schrader. That's about it for third spot. You we see Jeff Gordon. He's now closed 1,500 to a second that time and was the fastest car. He ran a 120.1. Burton ran a 119.3, almost a mile an hour faster. Single is given to Jeff Burton. Ten laps to go. Lost a little bit more that time. It's point six six now. There you see it as they go by Dick Trickle driving in relief for Todd Bonine. And here comes Mark Martin to the inside of Kenny Schrader as they wrestle for third. Mark, we see. Point five two seconds, half second back is Jeff Gordon. He is closing in with nine Ooh. laps to go, and Martin and Schrader almost collide. Boy, they're battling hard for that third position. John Andretti is watching all of this. 
4,200 now. Tenth of a second a lap. There are eight to go, and he made it only four if he keeps it up at that rate. Of course, uh, catching him is one thing and passing him is another. They're running two entirely different grooves. We've just got about three minutes of racing left, folks. Don't go away. Gordon is now within just a few car lengths of Jeff Burton. It's down to a third of a second. And now Jeff Burton has moved up the racetrack to the same groove that Jeff Gordon was running. A head-to-head -head duel coming up between Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon. Six, Six to go. It's 24 hundredths of a second. Jim Burton said, we want to win one in Virginia. Come on, let's win one in Virginia. They're both from South Boston down the road about 60, 70 Here's miles. Gordon looking to the inside with five to go. See the bumper cover on Jeff Burton's car. Someone has hit the back of it because it's waving in the breeze. Gets the thing loose as he comes off the corner. Gordon got a run on him. It's Isn't given him it an opportunity to get to the inside of Jeff Burton off the corner. Burton maintains the advantage. Boy, Jeff has given it a great battle. Both Jeffs. Yeah. What'd you say, Jeff? You <laughs> cover it all there, don't you? Gordon's beating him right there off the two. Got a run on him. Once again, Jeff Gordon tries to move alongside Burton. It's been a clean battle between these two. Three laps to go. That's exactly what I was thinking, Bob. How clean it is. Now, right here is where Jeff Gordon is beating Jeff Burton. But on turn four, Burton is beating Gordon. That might be where the bridge really counts. So that's going to come to the start finish line. Here's Jeff again to the inside. Burton. Well, that time, ooh, they're almost side by side. This may be where Gordon passes. He's got to run, but he can't use that momentum off the corner. Burton comes back. Great, great battle. Gordon had to back off coming off the turn. White flag coming out. Will it be Burton or Gordon at Richmond? One more lap to go. Gordon in behind Jeff Burton. Gordon heads for the inside, coming off corner number two, down the back stretch. Jeff Gordon pulls alongside, but Burton inches ahead as they move three through the third and fourth corners. They're coming to the line for the win. It is Jeff Burton winning over Jeff Gordon. What a great race. Wow, wow. Finish third. And look at Kim. <laughs> Second win of 1998 for Jeff Burton. He also won a New Hampshire, his fifth career win, and his second on a short track. Burton wins at Richmond. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. By Quaker State for protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Jeff Burton is in victory lane. Here's our McDonald's Winter Circle interview with Dr. Jerry Punch. And a moment ago, he climbed out of this car, stood on the roof, and this crowd in Virginia went nuts. Jeff, congratulations. What a finish. I got the money's worth tonight. Uh, that's a hell of a race for the next side forward. You know, I need to thank Jeff Gordon, first of all. He drove me real clean. And uh, we worked together all night getting through some traffic. Traffic was really hard. And uh, we took our time with each other all night. And, uh, I want to thank him first because he, he drove me real clean in there at the end. These guys did a hell of a job in the pits all night. We picked up spots every single time. Uh, we beat the 24 out of the pit every single time, and that's huge because we all know how good they are. Uh, big win for us. You know, this is the X-Side race. And, uh, come here, Art. Come here, Art. Come here. Get free, baby. We had to make some possible right here. It's the CEO, Art Hawkins, CEO of X-Side. And I'm going to get in. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, they're going to announce him with Coach as they are celebrating in victory lane. Let's go back to Bob. <laughs> Take a look at the results here of this race here tonight, which was one of the best we've seen in a long time. Burton not only wins, but leads the most laps. That's the reason for the double yellow arrows. The other yellow arrows indicate those who led at least one lap. Just competitive racing all night, side by side, sometimes three abreast. And Jeff Burton has beaten Jeff Gordon and the others here at Richmond International Raceway. Now the point standings. 204 point advantage now for Jeff over Martin, 308 over Jared, and 475 over Rusty Wallace. And as you can see, Ken Schrader moves up a position tonight, then John Andretti moves into the top 10. And don't forget tomorrow, RPM today at 12.30 Eastern Time on the Deuce, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Memphis 200 at 1 o'clock here on ESPN, and then the Card FedEx Championship Series from Laguna Seca at 3 o'clock here on ESPN. Don't forget, Sports Center is coming up with all the major stories from the world of sports. Coming up in just a few moments. Stay with us for that. Well, again, our congratulations to Jeff Burton, who has won over Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Ken Schrader, and John Andretti. Kim Burton and the entire team celebrates Jeff Wynn here tonight. The final interval was just about a half a car length. Burton in victory lane for the second time this year. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.